From the Smith Radio Studios, it's Carrie and Brian Smith. This is Smith Radio. You can tweet at Smith Radio, S M Y T H Radio. And now, your host, Carrie and Brian Smith. I always feel so long. Yeah, you can talk before it's over. <laughs> I just don't want to interrupt you. Oh, you know? man, the professionalism here. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. He's the professional, right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Welcome to Smith Radio, military veteran talk radio. Your host, Brian Smith and Kerry Smith. Giving you all late breaking news of last week, wrapping it all up, making sense of it all, uh, exposing the fake news, telling you what they're saying, why they're saying it, the reasoning behind it. And as you see by the title today, the deep state is absolutely uh, – uh, they're they're always though, they're always. Yeah, no, you're right, you're right. So we're going to talk a lot about that. There's a lot of stuff. Obviously, everybody, uh, well, not everybody, but if this, if you're listening to the show and you don't know what happened in Syria last night, we'll get into that. We'll we'll explain it. A little, little explaining to do about what happened. What's it mean? Is Donald Trump still MAGA? I don't know. Have you been listening to some other uh, talk show hosts? I was listening to Alex Jones earlier. Oh. <laughs> For that guy, that guy out there that gave us a, a one-star review on Facebook, hating on us. For making a comment about Alex Jones being slightly unhinged, uh, we, we might have to revisit our evolution in I think with so. our opinion. Our <laughs> opinion of Alex Jones has got has gone through a a very a crazy roller coaster. It has, and it's taken a new dip. <laughs> If you will. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, James Comey with a old new new old book out. Uh, oh, was it in the fiction it, section? It was in the total fiction oh, section. Oh, yes. We're going to get into all that stuff. James Woods had something to say. Ari Fleischer had something to say. Tom Fitton, who is the CEO of Judicial Watch, if you ever see any kind of documents coming out of uh, um uh, the, the the government, meaning uh, the Freedom of Information Act, the FOIA requests, and he gets he's like the number one guy, Judicial Watch, that gets those things. He's got a lot to say about what's been going on with Comey and give us an update of how it's going with him being able to get more information out. Awesome. Uh, Donald Trump tweeted... He had a Twitter storm this weekend, folks. Donald Trump tweeting away. That's the way it's always reported. He's he's on a rampage on Twitter. It's a Twitter storm. He's unhinged. He's crazy. He's lost it. He's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Uh, 25th Amendment. Here we come, baby. I don't know. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. know. Uh, yeah, so uh, Trump approval rate. Let's start the show off with a good note, huh? Well, to- it seems like there's all these, these really wild, crazy news items that have been hitting – that have been uh, making headlines on an hourly basis, daily basis. Some of these headlines go on for several days. And the left for the longest time has been really excited about this. They're driving this narrative that they feel is hurting him. And guess what? After all is said and done, we have new approval ratings coming out. Stormy Daniels has destroyed Trump's credibility. Gun control, <laughs> destroying Trump and the movement and the Second Amendment and everybody, all the conservatives that are for the Constitution, that that horribly evil document, as they like to tell us. And and guess what? It's rallying conservatives, apparently. Yeah. And we have a new high in approval rating. Just so, hit 50, uh, Trump tweets out, just hit 50 percent in the Rasmussen poll, much higher than President Obama at same point. With all the phony stories and fake news, it's hard to believe. Thank you, America. We are doing great things. All right. Yeah, that's that's that feels good, folks. It feels real good. In a in a weekend, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna come out. And I gotta say something. I'm gonna be honest with you. This show was tough to come to today. Really? I was a little down in the dumps. Well, you gotta explain this one to me. Well, just everything going on, all the negativity, and there is a little bit of negativity going on in 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 my family life. Uh oh. Not not in my house, somebody else's house. Oh, so you're just like... Um, You'll hear about it after the show, Carrie. 
Okay. <laughs> this is new to me. I don't know nothing about it. I mean, we are cousins, by the way. Those who uh, refer to us as brothers, I'm, I don't even correct people anymore. I'm just like, okay. All right. Because, you know, if we were brothers, we'd hate each other. That's how brothers. No, come on. I'm, no, we'd, we'd have grown up too close to each other. Oh, my brother? You're the same age as my brother? We don't hate each other. Yeah, but you don't have a show together. Could he do the show? Even if he was whatever, even if he right. was a professional broadcaster, you guys be at each other's throats. Ah. So you need a little bit of yeah. space. So I think the cousin thing has really helped us yeah. to be able to do this. And but I've anyway. got some ma- family members that are getting some space themselves. Oh, wow. Now you yeah. know. Now you no, know. I don't know, actually. I'm just <laughs> I'll let you explain to me after the show. So getting back to yeah, we'll get this getting back to politics. Politics. Um, uh, Megan McCain. Oh, speaking of family members. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of family members, Megan McCain on The View. Yeah. The View it seems like The View. I, I, I don't watch it. Don't watch it ever. I don't know anybody who does. I don't have a single female in, in my wor- world or realm that claims to watch that show. Well, for me, uh, some of you guys remember uh, that I would talk a lot about coaching wrestling. I do own a seasonal business. And it just so happens that wrestling season is when the business is pretty much shut down for the winter. Right. And because of this, you know, wrestling is a high school sport. It doesn't start till school's over. So every day, all the way until about 2.30, 2 o'clock, 2.30, I'm at home. And the TV could be on. And you I you watching was, the View? I was subject to the View for many, many, many years. I coached for a Why? long time. Why? Why would you watch the View for many years? Because I cut the cable. I still can't. I I had three I would, choices. When I, you cut the cable, you have three choices or five if you count PBS. I would watch Paint Dry. Uh, well, the I joy of painting the sometimes came on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yeah, PBS, you got the joy of painting with Bob Ross. Yeah. yeah. Or God rest you his, have the God communist women, God the vile rest. communist women at The View. Ne- violent, violent. Violent, vile. Oh, just yes. spewing victimization. They embrace victimization. They victimhood. They, 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 embrace they embrace everything. Truly. If it, Everything is on the table when it comes to attacking and destroying conservatism. And so I, I, I googled the YouTube, uh, uh, make it, uh, John uh, McCain's health, mm-hmm. and Cindy McCain, his wife, mm-hmm. was on the View to talk about his health, and they oh. just, oh, the great one, the beautiful, the lovely, oh, cheers all around, Cindy McCain. Whoa. You know, have you ever heard of stolen valor? It's like the thing – it's a thing that people – and I'll tell you, as a veteran myself and Brian's a veteran, it's annoying. Like I don't like or, – or I don't – I shouldn't say I don't like. I don't, I'm not comfortable with people saying, oh, you're a hero or, oh, thank you for your service and all this kind of stuff because – and, and I, I think I speak for a lot of veterans that are like – you know, I was just doing my job or I, I joined because I just wanted to do something with my life in college with my, and, and, and so the, the valor kind of just comes from ending up just doing it. But you know, you do serve your co- country. So I do understand why you guys feel that way. But, uh, that's stolen valor is when somebody tries to act like they are a veteran. So you think that's what they were doing to Cindy McCain? Maybe? No, <laughs> I'm making an analogy. Oh, okay. Okay. Similar, maybe even worse than stolen valor. Oh wow! Would be faking a fatal damn d- disease or something—a uh, terminal disease that millions of people, hundreds of thousands, easily uh, in our lifetime have probably died from. Yeah. What's What's the deal with John McCain and his uh, brain cancer? I feel like it's similar to Stolen Valor. I wanted to check into it because I wasn't sure. I haven't heard anything. And right. He, and apparently he tweeted out this weekend to Trump. Okay. So if he's on the Twitter, I guess he's still alive and kicking. Oh, yeah. And as a matter of fact, it seems like he's completely gone into remission. You know, I had an ex-girlfriend. And and her, you can do that. It can happen, but whatever. Had an ex-girlfriend, her, uh, her boyfriend after me. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was friends with my sister, so that's why I, I know about this. He claimed she was going to break up with him, and he claimed he had cancer. 
Okay. So she stayed with him, and uh, it, it just kept going downhill. But he did claim to have. He played it he, off. He for didn't like, have. Cancer. No, he didn't. He didn't have cancer. For almost a year, he played it You're off. You're going to leave cancer. me when I'm, I only have four months to live. <laughs> And you say that every month? Every month. I only month. have four, four months, months to live. It's hey, been eight years. Come on. There's What's the name of that, 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 uh, the bar up the street with a big the sign on it says free drinks tomorrow? It's up there across the street from, uh, up on Harrison Avenue, across the street from, uh, I didn't know that there was, that sign even existed. Free it's, drinks tomorrow. It's on the, it says free, every day it says free drinks tomorrow. Every day. Because if you show up the next day, it'll still say free drinks tomorrow. Oh, we changed that. It's not today. It's, it's tomorrow. tomorrow. Right, tomorrow. It's still tomorrow, man. Yeah, I didn't. I haven't seen that. You're going to have to point that so, out to me when So I don't know. I guess John McCain's still alive and kicking. He's plenty fine. Um, but anyways, Megan McCain is his daughter, and she's on The View. And she's claiming to take some kind of conservative stance of sorts or she wants to be the voice of the real conservative movement she goes a little bit off the rails we'll get into that and then one that we cannot forget other than california slipping off the side of the earth we'll get to you california we'll get to you in due time <laughs> in due time <laughs> But uh, one that we will not let go, and I think we probably ought to lead off with this one. Well, don't forget about our guest, too. Oh, I didn't forget about him. Okay, good. When's he coming on? Six. Oh, fantastic. I'm, make sure I'm making note of that. 45 minutes from now, folks. So uh, the earlier this week, uh, just out of the blue, I mean, you know, when when somebody says, hey, where were you when uh, uh, when you heard about Michael Jackson? Mm, no. I remember. I where remember were you when 9-11? Where were you that You just moment? compared 9-11 to Michael Jackson's death. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just, well, for Generation Xers, it's probably a good I'm one. saying <laughs> where you remember that moment where you right. were. Well, yeah, when something happens and you're just kind of shocked. Right. And you usually your memory will somehow – some sort of biology happens in your head at that point and you just – you don't – you remember things like where you were at right. when you heard it. So, Do you remember – where you were when Donald Trump's lawyer's office was raided this month by the government. A sitting president's personal lawyer had his office raided and confiscated everything. His office, his house, which was being, being renovated, uh, his house was uh, ransacked. All kinds of documents, all kinds of things, and come to find out, he he was uh, uh, he always this uh, Cohen Cohen always well not always but most of the time was uh, known for recording audio of okay. all his meetings. All right, all of it taken. Oh man, that's not good. That's not good for all you lawyers out there. For all you lawyers out there, be very afraid. Actually, anybody that cares anything about the Constitution, be very afraid. And we're going to get into – I would like to speak extensively in this show on why it's specifically a violation, a direct violation of our Bill of Rights. And that will be an important part of this show because it um, it really is. It really is. And and it's kind of obscure because it deals with a an amendment that – you know, we don't really think about too much. Right. So. so Donald Trump tweeted out, attorney-client privilege is now a thing of the past. I have many, too many lawyers, and they are probably wondering when their offices or even their homes are going to be raided with everything, including their phones, computers taken. All lawyers are deflated and concerned. I, I just... I'm just saying, folks, there is no rule of law when that happens. When that goes down, when that happens, there's... It, it's, well, we've lost all uh, – the American way goes down the toilet when that happens. So, But we'll get into that. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty much what we're going to start off with today. Oh, okay. Cohen Ray. All right, the Cohen Raid. And we, do we want to tell them who's going to be a guest? For yeah, we? yeah, say it. Oh. Okay. It's, it's on the title of the show, but go ahead. Introduce our guest at so 45 So Paul minutes. Ryan is retiring. Oh, man, that was another part of the show. Well, yeah, we'll get to it. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, actually, he'll probably get into it. So Paul Ryan is retiring, and this kind of happy little coincidence is that um, we were 
talking to a guy who we were told about that is running in Wisconsin, and he was going to run against Paul Ryan. Right. And it's Nick. I think it's pronounced uh, Pulse. It's P O L C E P O L C E, and you can follow him at Nick Four House, and he will be on the show today, and he will tell us all about himself. But awesomely, since Paul Ryan is retiring, he's going. Or at this point, I don't know who all is going to run in the Republican primary, but they're all running out of time. So I know Paul Nalen would was one uh, that was running against, but I'm not really even sure where he's at now because we don't get to hear from him anymore because he's not on Twitter, which is a whole other story. Um, <laughs> kind of a it's crazy, kind of a sad story, yeah. but uh, in in a, in a million different ways. But so we have Nick for House who's going to uh, talk to us, and that will be awesome because we had this thing getting ready to line up before Paul, uh, Paul Ryan. Re- uh, Announce his retirement. So, so we may be talking about the actual future congressman of the first district of Wisconsin today on the show. So, all right. Uh, Rightwingwatch.org says Paul Nealon is running. Okay. All right. So we weren't sure what the heck happened, but whatever. So he may be uh, uh, going up against Nealon in the primary, and we'll talk to Nick today. All right. So, and he's a former Green Beret, but we'll let him talk all about that when he comes on. So let's get to the, the – what happened with Cohen? What what exactly – what are the details of this? So Cohen is the attorney, the personal attorney of Donald Trump. Correct. And he uh, – this has been his job for Trump for many, many years. I'm assuming because he's an attorney, he probably has other clients. I would think that if Trump is paying him enough and giving him enough work – then maybe he doesn't have any, any other clients, but as a, just a general attorney, he probably does. And you always go for more. You always go for more. And, and you know, he would know everything about what's going on behind the scenes with Trump. Things that nobody else should ever know. They should not know. It. Right. It's almost like a personal counsel. Like Donald Trump could call up Cohen and say, "Hey, man." I know those uh, those transactions that we we made with uh, you know so and so and Mike and Jenny and stuff and man I'm just feeling really down in the dumps about that maybe maybe we shouldn't have done that let's I'm second guessing it if that audio got out that Donald Trump was being real second guessing something or just uh, whatever let's just be clear let's just be clear. If you broke the law, okay. and we're not saying that Trump did, no. But if, you, if there, I don't know what the percentage is, but there's a lot of people out there who have had to actually hire a lawyer to go and represent them in either a trial or maybe um, they had a slip and fall at the store. You know, you got your ambulance chasers or whatnot. At some point, the 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 lawyer is not a part of the game that you're trying to play. They need to know what actually happened. A lawyer's not going to go to court. Let's say you're on trial for murder. They're not they're, he's not going to go to court and say, "Your honor, I think my defense or my um my uh, uh client is innocent because he told me so." That's not what they do. You tell them, "Yes, I murdered him." And I need you to try to get me off. They want you to tell them that. If you murdered somebody, they want you to tell them exactly what you did and exactly what evidence they've collected on you. And they're going to try to get you an innocent, even though they know you're guilty. And that's why people hate lawyers, because they get people off who they know good and damn well are totally guilty. They do not want you to ever lie to them. And here's why. They can't properly represent you unless they know everything the full unadulterated uncensored truth they do not want you to lie to them about something you actually did now there's a lot of people there's a lot of attorneys out there that are just good people good-hearted people and they're not going to want to represent you if you say yeah i i went out there and i murdered him you know they might say oh my god Gosh, I can't, I can't defend this guy. And maybe right. they'll, they'll, they'll take themselves out, and they won't be um, your lawyer or whatnot. That's very possible. But they do not want you lying to him. That being said, Trump has got to tell Cohen, his lawyer, everything that actually happened, and then Cohen 
being the um, scumbag lawyer that you know everybody everybody thinks that all lawyers are scumbags, scumbags. and this is the reason why. Well, you know, yeah, I mean, Gloria Allred. I, I'm just saying. Oh yeah, Gloria is the biggest scumbag so that glad. I know for, for sure. Because she, her she, clients come to her, and the client says, uh, "Miss Allred, what should I say? What what yeah, what, what oh, do I yeah. need you to defend me of? Right, and come up with <laughs> come up with something. Come to up defend with something, me. and I. Well, and that's the thing. The the lawyer is going to tell you what to say and what not to say is a big one. You definitely – because you don't want to provide evidence of a crime to the prosecutor or the state or whoever it is that's coming after you. Or if you're being sued by a company, you don't want to give them the evidence that the court is going to use to find the uh, the other guy in favor. In the So that all being said, it's – been determined by none other, none other than our founders of the U.S., the writers, the authors of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, that this kind of interaction in this kind of a society must be able to remain completely confidential because that would be the only way you could get proper representation. But let's back up a little bit. Why do you even need lawyers? Why do you need representation? The founders wanted to make a country in which we yes. are self-ruled and that we don't have a king or a dictator or whatever who makes law and judges crimes, judges people based on whether or not he determines that you need punishment based on whatever whim that he comes up with that day. Or you know, maybe he's in a bad mood and he just wants to punish somebody to make himself feel better. This is what they've had to deal with for hundreds and hundreds of years. Not just the founders, but their forefathers, their ancestors passed down through the generations. And at some point before our founders were even born, a guy named John Locke and another guy unrelated to him, uh, Charles Montesquieu, came up with a philosophy, like a, a solution. Like if somebody were to come up to you, Brian, and say, Brian, all these guys. Kings, queens, dictators, uh, just these rulers, these tyrants. They threw my brother in jail and they just left him there to they, rot. He they, never even got, got a court date. They sent these people to uh, yeah. go hang or they yeah. crucified. Whatever it was over the years with all these unjust uh, – th the, the thing is is there needs to be some sort of government in a society full of people so that we can determine you know, whether somebody broke a law. They need to be judged fairly and all that. So John Locke and Charles Montesquieu – wrote the philosophy on how to self-govern. And our founders went straight to their books, the books that were written by these two gentlemen, to figure out how to write a new government because they were leaving the, the old one. Yeah, the yeah. old one, which is England, Great Britain, or whatever you want to call them. It seems like they're interchangeable or whatever. Okay. U United Kingdom, Great Britain, England, whatever. So... They wrote the Constitution with the three balanced uh, uh, branches of government. Uh, they have checks and balances so that no one branch could take over and become the tyrannical government that they're trying to, to uh, avoid. So you have the other two branches that are always doing checks on any one given branch. It's supposed to. And then some somebody uh, decided, well, we need uh, we need more protections than just what three branches of government will provide. We need to add a bill of rights that would pretty much remind the government or tell the government or, or ensure the citizens that they will not do things that would be considered uh, unjust or tyrannical towards its people. And so they wrote the ten. Uh, uh, bills in the no, not <laughs> the ten bills of the bill bill of rights the, the the ten rights I guess and so one of them well we know we know one everybody said Fourth Amendment Fourth Amendment as soon as Cohen got raided so um, let me open it up for you real quick if I can oh hmm I'm slow here she's not playing sorry she's about that it's not playing today huh. Yeah, so in the Fourth Amendment, the right of the people to uh, to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. So in a free society, in a free society, either you're doing something wrong or you're not doing something wrong. You're doing something illegal or you're acting legally. But if somebody suspects you of a crime, they feel – they felt that it was 
stepping over the bounds to say, well, we think you may have uh, committed a crime, and be, just because we suspect it, we're going to go ahead and just ransack your house and yeah. start taking everything out, and we're going to find – Somebody told me something about you. Right. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's a criminal act that you may or may not have committed. <laughs> And based upon that... But we don't have enough evidence to just go ahead and convict you right now. However, if I ransack your house, I know I'm going to find you. the evidence. I will bet you it's there. I promise you it's there. if I don't there. find that, I know I'm going to find something because right. you're an ODB. That's all i got to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they made the Fourth Amendment, and that was the first initial reaction. I don't know how you felt when you first heard about Cohen's offices being raided. Some people were saying this is a violation of, of Trump's Fourth Amendment. I think that might be kind of – you're leaping a little bit too far. You, it, it's clearly a violation of Cohen's Fourth Amendment unless, unless – with some people would argue that him saying that he – Paid for the payoff to silence Stormy Daniels in order to prevent her testimony, her words or whatever, her public, you know, in the court of public opinion, right. that this would somehow. It's legal to pay people off. I mean, she gets right. paid to do that very thing on a regular. That's her full time job. OK, so she gets so a non-disclosure agreement is just a contract. And so Cohen was just saying, well, let me just have this contract written up and to help enforce it. We'll pay her one hundred thirty thousand dollars out of my own pocket. And that way she won't say anything. And there's an argument now that if he paid her, maybe he's the one that had the affair with. I've her. been thinking that all along. <laughs> I have been thinking that all like, along. wait a minute. Maybe he paid her because he, he uh, yeah. <laughs> it seems a it seems a little suspect that he would agree or or tell everybody that yes he paid and he just wanted to keep her quiet for Trump even though it wasn't out of Trump's treasury it was out of his own pocket or whatnot so but getting back to the Fourth Amendment so I I think it's more of a violation of his Fourth Amendment rights because I think it's a leap and let me read the rest of it no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause. Supported by oath or affirmation, which by a judge, and particularly describing the place to be searched and persons and things to be seized. You can't just willy-nilly say everything on the street that Michael Cohen lives on. I want everything on that. I want free reign right. to go into wh wherever I want that has any. They actually did that, though. But I know, but that's not legal. Well, if the judge said, oh, you want everything? <laughs> If the judge says yes, which is why I think there's a lot of corruption here. If the judge says yes, then guess what? Everything is going to oh, be searched and seized yeah. and gone through and all this kind of stuff. So um, so the reason I believe that the Fourth Amendment was violated is because I don't think the probable cause was legit. For him to pay off Stormy Daniels I think is more of a contract agreement between him and her. And he paid it. Right. I, I don't see. I think it's a leap. What they're saying is, let's say, let's tell them what they're saying. They're saying that this payment to her, in order to prevent her from sandbagging his uh, Trump's ability to become president, is a con campaign uh, contribution. Right. Right. And so that would be a violation because one hundred thirty thousand dollars is way more than you're allowed to do. Dinesh D'Souza. Spent time in prison for the same thing, and it was a lot less. I think he ten, ten thousand from him, ten thousand from a friend, and ten thousand from another friend. Okay, so that twenty thousand, Dinesh D'Souza repaid, paid them back, and they made the payment, the donation, hmm. and Dinesh went ahead and paid it back. So they call that a thirty thousand dollar. They could make that leap. They they can make that argument in court and say, well. Yeah, sure, it came from these other people, but he paid them back, so essentially it was a $30,000 donation. That's what they did. From that, and that's the, why yeah. he got thrown in jail. Right, and so – and he, he actually says, I screwed up. I shouldn't have done it. And so he, he agrees that that's true. This was not a direct contribution to Trump's campaign that Cohen, we're talking about with Cohen. Right. It's a contract that was between Cohen and – uh, Storm. Stormy Daniels. And, and there's a third party's name on the contract, David Dennison. Da, da, and they're saying that that's an alias. They're Trump saying that's an alias. Or... Trump. But here's the thing. That 
Stormy Daniel signatures on it and Cohen signatures on it. But the third one that supposedly is supposed to be Trump, it said David Davidson. Mm-hmm. I didn't know signature. Oh, so that could be problematic too, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Well, and then, then that leads to the next question. Why is she remaining silent for the most part? Now, if you know anything about non-disclosure agreements, she's clearly violated that already. Oh, but she are. hasn't, she hasn't come out with everything. I think she ended up saying eventually, well, we had sexual relations one time. And if you know anything about reading people's body language and just reading people's speech, uh, I can tell you as a, uh, Amateur, that's um, uh, semi-pro. <laughs> Poker player, yeah. Uh, that um, she looks like she's lying to me. <laughs> uh, just what one time. Just, and, and you even said your wife watched the uh, the interview. And she oh, said, I asked her. Yeah. Now keep in mind, I didn't see it. Right. I, I see. I have seen it since. But when I got home, it was the night that she did did her interview on sixty minutes. I think it was a sixty minutes, and. She- she did her interview. She had, a had interview. an interview. Okay. I, hey, I grammatically uh, challenge. We're, we're dealing with an individual uh, who has a very dicey job. Got to be, be be real careful. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you're saying certain words can uh, have different connotations. Tr- trigger somebody. Trigger somebody. Yeah. Trigger. <laughs> we want, it was a family show. Yes. So uh, what we ended up having was uh, my I, I I came home and my wife had watched it. It had just happened. And so I said, what's your take on it? Did Trump cheat on his wife? Because that's really what this is all about. Right, right. Don't let the Democrats try to make this any kind of analogy to Bill Clinton. Completely. This isn't apples and oranges. This is apples and uh, drag cars, drag racers, not drag queens. (laughs) Oh, no. See, I can't even use any words anymore. Wow. Anyway, I just saw the look on your face and I was like, oh, he did not like the fact that I used – Drag car. Drag yeah, car. because Stormy Man. Daniels probably has friends that are drag queens. Okay, so I, she's another. in that industry. Race cars. Let's just race cars. Let's keep it really simple. So it's not even in the same ballpark at all. We're talking yeah. about a president who is currently having an affair on his wife in office, in the Oval Office, and then lying to Congress about it, and that's what ended up taking him down. Which, by the way, he didn't really get taken down. He ended up serving the, his full. Term, he just got impeached but not convicted. Right. And here's the thing, folks. If that's what they're trying to play, because I can't see any other angle of why CNN runs all day, 24-7, stormy, 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 every day, all day. Like mm-hmm. uh, Rush said. It's ridiculous. It's it's not even – all it is – Disgusting. Is, it's a way to – there's two things that's happening. Number one, they're trying to get people who are smart into thinking – well, this guy's a scumbag for doing that to his wife, Melania. She's such a sweet girl. She's so nice. How how could he do this to her? Of course, While was, she was, was pregnant, it was ten years ago. Whatever. Um, I so think the baby was born. But that something. obviously it's, it would still be bad if that's true. So that's one thing that they're doing. But the other thing they're doing, they're trying to get people who are not as smart, not as knowledgeable about all of this, into believing that we have Monica Lewinsky part two. Yeah, it's. And that is absolutely 100% not the case. It's a redux. Yeah. they What they did with Bill Clinton, and I do think that there were a couple things that they may have stepped over the line with um, as far as what Congress and what these prosecutors were doing. Maybe it was probably a waste of time, but you got to understand times were different back then. Right. This was a much more serious scandal in the minds of the public at the time is what we have these days because I think that we've – we slid down that slippery slope where it's like, oh, sex with this porn star? Whatever. She's pretty, who, has, who hasn't done that? She's pretty hot, too. Yeah, right. But back then, we lived in a little different times. For To to get, to get catch the present red-handed, which the blue dress does essentially catch him red-handed, um, doing this was a major scandal. But anyway, um, so it's not analogous or anything like that, but I want to get to the. S- it, hold on, but yeah, but they ahead. but but that Monica thing. If if they can parlay this, and this is this is the parlay, folks. Mueller appointed this raid mm-hmm. without his hands being on it. Right. Just like uh, he pretty much sent the order to do it, though. Right. right. But they were investigating Whitewater. 
which was a scandal. Oh, you're talking about with Bill Clinton? With, with the Clintons, okay. yeah. I mean, it was just scandalous what they were doing to these people. And so that's what so they were investigating. So you're talking about a real cl- crime here. Yes. As opposed to Russiagate, which okay. is completely but, a hoax. Right. They're trying to mirror that to get conservatives to see, I reject see, look, this stuff. See, look. I reject it's, it's it. the same thing. People have told me um, – uh, people that, if you're listening to me right now, you know who I'm talking about, but I'm not going to name his name. Um, and I have a lot of respect for him. But he told me that they're trying to get Trump to repeat some of the things that Nixon did right. in office in order to say, you see, now we have to impeach because that's what they did to Nixon. Right. And I'm like, but it's not the same for him to fire everybody. <laughs> Um, and Nixon was now, so long ago, though. I, I, I would have no. I mean, I'm trying. an I'm an adult with children, and I I got no recollection of that. Right. Guy. Well, a lot of young people that are listening to us right now do not know this, but anybody that's old enough that's involved in this, and I'm talking our age or older, they have one thing on their mind, and that is revenge for what happened to Bill Clinton. This is yeah. pure. Re- I'm talking about the older yeah. ones. I'm not yeah. talking about the ones that are that are working on this that are millennials. But if they're my age or older, yeah, if that you're in were, your 40s, 50s, because they 60s. had to live through yeah. the they they may have been working for Clinton. People that worked for Clinton or worked for the Democrat Party at the time back in the in the 90s, uh, you know, moveon.org is a reference to moving on from the fact that he um, slept with an intern in the Oval Office. It was like, guys, move on, move on. This is nothing to see here. And I don't I don't uh, have a problem with that argument. But what I'm saying is, is they are angry and they still are. If they're alive today, they're still angry and they're looking for uh, revenge. And they're going to lie, cheat, and steal to get vengeance. And that's what you're seeing today, right, right now. And so but, we're talking about the Mueller, or we're talking about Mueller appointing the raid of uh, Donald Trump's lawyer Cohen, right? Which is, I, I mean, th- throw the rule of law out the window. Back when I was in college, I had three roommates, and they were idiots, and they didn't know much anything. I printed off the Fourth Amendment, I cut it, and I pasted it at the front door, right. So do, but not, I think, do not let anybody in unless they have a warrant. Right, right. What's interesting, there's a lot of there's a lot to be said about the Fourth Amendment and how it's applied. Um, but I don't think the Fourth Amendment was as big a violation. I, it was definitely a violation. But the big one that we lost, and Trump made mention about it in a tweet, is that the Sixth Amendment, which a lot of people have never either never looked at or haven't even thought much about it or thought – of its importance until now. Right. And lo- I'm glad. I'm glad. I was one of the very first people. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I'm telling you, I was looking at the reporting. <laughs> I do the agree. reporting on this raid, I was probably, I feel like I was literally the first person to start ringing the bells or sounding the horns for this being a violation of the Sixth Amendment. So I'll read that real quick. In the Sixth Amendment, and by getting back to it, our founders wrote this like 240 years ago or whatnot, and it was because they felt that these rights were critical to be able to give people the freedom that they never enjoyed in their entire lifetime, in the lifetime of their parents, their grandparents, and as far back this as helps, they can remember. Right. This helps to create freedom. Right. And, the, and what they said – or per, preserve it. Preserve, preserve it. freedom, yes. So what they said in the Sixth Amendment was, in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial, which uh, unrelated, I think that the, the entire Mueller investigation, the Russiagate hoax, is a violation of the Sixth Amendment because of this. this agreed, is no, agreed, yeah. Well, you know, are we going to prosecute? I think – now, it doesn't say investigations. I would like to amend this to include investigations. Like – if you've been investigating for a year on a non-capital crime, you have a right to a speedy conclusion oh, it, to it, this. It, it, you, I would have to say, I would say, add to that, that in a year, you've got to present evidence to either to prosecute, con- to continue right. the investigation, right. to prosecute it, do something. Especially for a non-capital offense. I mean, I understand if... if if you're investigating a murder yeah, yeah, and 20 yeah. years down the line, you're like, oh, I found the evidence. You shouldn't Cold say, case. well, you know what? Uh, Sixth Amendment, he has the right to a conclusion <laughs> to his investigation. No, 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 no. But gosh, this is uh, uh, Russiagate? 
I don't even know if there's a crime here. But anyway. No, no. So uh, by an impar- – oh, a speedy, uh, speedy public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law and to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation. So you you, you can't just be sitting at home. And they come to your house and say, come on, you're going to jail. What? What? What, I, what, what? I do? We don't have to tell you. No, so that Sixth <laughs> Amendment to... violation, they have to tell you. And to be confronted with the witnesses against him. So you can't go to court and the court saying, hey, we're not going to show you who this guy is, but he told us that you did some bad things to him. No, no, no. You have a right to face him in a trial. And also to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in favor of and to have assistance of counsel for his defense. So let me repeat that. You have the right to have the assistance of counsel for your defense. Now, so where how do you connect the dots between what happened to Cohen uh, and what happened essentially to not just Cohen, but all of his clients? Every one of them. And the Sixth Amendment, which says that you have the right to the assistance of counsel for your defense. This is what we're talking about when we say attorney-client privilege. And I am so happy that uh, – I think it – was it Rush or was it somebody – some talk radio show this week pointed out that the attorney-client privilege is not the attorney's privilege. It's the client's Client. privilege. Yeah. The attorney has the responsibility to uphold the the attorney-client privilege, but it's the client's privilege that all the things that you told him are to remain confidential. And that is the only way that you're going to get proper assistance of counsel. How can you get, according to the Sixth Amendment, assistance for counsel for your defense if you have to be worried that the state is going to raid your counsel's office that has everything you've ever told him. You can't, Think about it. You can't. This is a clear violation of the Sixth Amendment, especially when you consider that everything from his office, everything from his home, and his home was being renovated, right. so he was staying in a, in a hotel. Everything, everything the at the hotel. hotel, all of it taken, all for... The state, who happens to be the prosecution here, right. gets to see everything. And they're trying to find that – they're trying to find that you broke law somewhere. Yeah, they're, they they're have They're trying no, to find that you broke law. They don't have a crime per se because um, colluding with Russia on a on – a, uh, Well, first off, colluding with Russia is not a crime. Yeah, it's not, Secondly, a, not a crime. Secondly, colluding with Stormy Daniels ain't no crime. Right, I mean, because right. she colludes – Adultery all is not illegal. It's very morally reprehensible. Right. But you will never go to jail for simple adultery. It's right. so So we're talking about a non-crime here. And I'm glad you, you brought that up because I did want to say that in the show – uh, this is adultery. They're literally um, this nonstop CNN reporting on Stormy Daniels. They are literally making a scandal out of adultery, which historically if Trump, if adultery Trump, is scandalous. But. If, if Trump lied about this, if Trump – To who? <laughs> said to, When Trump said, I did not uh, get with Stormy, okay. I wasn't with her. Now, I don't even know that woman. Well, I don't think he said I don't know her. But he said no, I didn't know it it didn't happen. She claims it happened one time. One time and only once. Well, just just once. Why did she have to say that? We talked about that. Yeah, Was it we last did. week or the week we before? Did. However, he has said now I did not do that. If he lied, and and that's what they find in all this search of Caesar, that he lied. Do we go to another special counsel for <laughs> some more? I, what the, who would he, there's no he's a lot he, there's you no have crime to be under oath you can yes there's no crime okay my whole point to that whole thing was he could lie to the american people all day long that he didn't do anything 15 years ago that don't mean nothing now right that you, what you got to understand is that bill clinton went up in front of congress put I his swear. hand on the bible Grant, and swore the bible. to them that, that he will tell the truth the whole and truth somehow 
So that Bible did not catch on fire when he touched Which is it. Which shocking. Very shocking. And uh, so he went up there and he said, I did not have sexual ra- relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. And that was what he ended up getting impeached for. It was an actual crime, what he committed. And he paid for it with impeachment. He did not uh, – didn't go to Senate. To, I think they acquitted him or yeah, something like that. So he ended up stop. not – yeah, it was it was not working for them. I think at one point I was in the military at the time, and I remember at being at the Chow Hall, and they had the TVs, the big CR TVs, <laughs> up and up in the, and I'm watching this thing go down in the Chow Hall, and I remember them gleefully, and them, I mean, uh, media. probably CNN, yeah. yeah, media, they were gleefully reporting that I think he had a ninety percent approval rating at that point, so it had shot up. Uh, once they had started prosecuting him or, or impeaching him or, you know, because people just didn't want that to happen to their president. And so whatever. See, when I was watching it in the dining facility. What dining facility? We call it chow hall. We have a trough and we, we don't use we don't use utensils. We don't even use our hands. We just put our face down in it. That's why they call it a chow hall, I guess. I don't know. I guess so. In, in the Air Force's dining facility. And where we go to die. Four star. Uh, four star facilita. Yeah. So just to wrap this all up, this is insanity. And this also leads to the Mueller uh, investigation, which also has to do with Comey, which we'll get to in a little bit. But just to kind of wrap up this whole Stormy Daniels, that's absolute pure insanity. This week, uh, like we're saying, Donald Trump's uh, approval poll numbers, 50%. Um, 23% of Americans polled believe... The alleged affair is important. How many percent? 23. That sounds pretty low. 73% say it's not important whatsoever. Yeah, and I, I'm not big on political polls and statistics, but I've heard from several places that if you can get up into the 75 percentile rating, that means um, three out of four people are on that side. It's a total, complete landslide. 51% of Democrats believe it's not important. Wow. That's, <laughs> that's where you get the 70 plus percent from because if all, if all of one side agree it's not important and half the other side agree it's not important, there's your three, three to one. Guess the number of independents because everybody's always got to get the independents. The mythical. Mythical. The legendary. The legendary. Uh, 79%. Independents say no. I don't make no. Never mind. Wow, that's pretty high. Wow. Okay. Uh, Trump denies the affair. However, fifty-eight uh, percent do not believe him. Uh, and or the fifty-eight to fourteen. Fourteen percent do not be- don't believe him, and fifty-eight percent still don't even care. Yeah, I I think it's hilarious that they're making they're tr- desperately trying to turn this into a scandal. They should have learned. This is how stupid the Democrats are. They should have learned from the Bill Clinton scandal. Yes. When it was all done, he had a ninety percent approval rating. Right. So they're doing the work necessary to drive Trump's yeah. approval ratings up. So the majority of people believe he knew about the thirty thousand uh, dollar exchange. One hundred and thirty thousand. $130,000 exchange. People, majority of people believed he knew it. Uh, well over majority believed they still don't care. Yeah, and at the end of the day, <laughs> there is care. no way Cohen is not going, no matter what they do to him, there's no way that by the time Trump is leaving office, he's not going to get a full 100% pardon of whatever it is they throw at him. Speaking about pardons, go to Trump's. Pardon.com. That's a okay. great place to go. Trump's, Trump's pardon. Pardon.com. Okay. I uh, learned a lot of great information there. Okay. Uh, but it, it, this week was all about fire Mueller, fire, 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 fire uh, Rosenstein, fire. Hey, Trump's going to fire him. I know he's going to fire him. He's going to fire him. He's going to fire him now. I know it's going to get the fires coming. He's going to fire him. And once again this weekend, White House spokesperson said, no, no. And nobody getting fired. I say Donald Trump pardon everybody. Pardon Stormy Daniels. <laughs> pardon, well, because you're not <laughs> pardon. The, he should pardon Mueller. He should go ahead and pardon uh, uh, pardon himself. Pardon uh, Flynn. Pardon 
everybody, and this whole thing just dissipates. It just it loses all its air. There's nothing left. Right. Well, the the big thing was is should he or should he not fire Mueller or Rosenstein or whatever? And of course, there's that whole thing. Oh, you do that, it's automatic impeachment. And um, and I'm just like, of course, I, I'm not buying into that. But I see where they are going to try to create a political firestorm over that. And it was Rush Limbaugh who got credit from a bunch of different places. I think Fox and Friends and all these places were all giving Rush credit for saying, well, if he just pardons all these people, that would put cold water on this entire thing. And I actually pointed out, as soon as I heard him say it, before anybody else reported it, I said, hey, Rush said he should just pardon everybody. And, and a bunch of my friends on Twitter were like, he could. He could. I didn't ever think about that, but he could. And uh, that would avoid the thing about firing the special counsel and all this kind of stuff, which and, obviously and is problematic. Would, everything would disappear. Everything would completely What would they be able to do at that point? It's like, okay, we're showing up to work today and we're going to stand around and look at each other. Anybody bring donuts? I, I'm looking for donuts. Yeah, so. So real quick, wrapping this all up, uh, I've, I've been meaning to play this for a long time. Okay. And uh, this is the famous, oh, the famous, because people have been asking about it. The famous Chewbacca defense. Oh, the Chewbacca defense. Okay. Yeah, by Johnny Cochran. The okay. Late, the late great Johnny Cochran. He did what he had to do. He knew OJ was guilty, but he did what he had to do. You know, OJ said, All right, guys. I did. All right, guys, let me level with you. <laughs> this is how I, uh, how I did my day. Right. Right. All the different details of how I made this happen, these deaths. Right. Can you get me off? And they probably looked at every set thing and said, we got the Chewbacca defense. Yes, that's right. <laughs> we have the Chewbacca defense. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of this supposed jury, you must now decide whether or not to reverse the decision for my client, Chef. I know he seems guilty, but ladies and gentlemen, this is Chewbacca. Okay. Now think about that for one minute. That think, does not yeah. make sense. Why what? am I talking about Chewbacca when a man's life is on the line? <laughs> why? i tell you why. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. If Chewbacca does not make sense, you must acquit. Here, look at the monkey. Look at the silly monkey. <laughs> Mind blown. Oh, yeah. The Chewbacca defense. Well, he goes, that's the short version, but he goes into it. He says, uh, uh, Chewbacca, an eight foot tall Wookiee, live on a planet indoor with four feet Ewoks. Why would an eight foot tall Wookiee on the entire planet? There's no other Wookiees. And he's the only one that's eight foot tall. Why would he live there with four foot Ewoks? That don't make no sense, folks. That is true. I have to. I'll, I'll tell you what. I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> so I quit. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. Good times, folks. Good times. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at on time frame? Okay, we're about six minutes away from our very special guest. Uh, while I check in with that, yeah, uh, definitely keep your so eyeballs. Text on Text our guest and let him know. Oh, sure. Yep. Okay. Tell him to get on the ready. All right, so uh, yeah, just keep on moving on, and I'll uh, work on that. Okay. So uh, as I was, I was I was telling you, and we're going to have our guest on here in just, in just a few minutes, but uh, how this all ties into this whole Mueller thing absolutely ties into James Comey this week. Uh, just some absolutely – it's unbelievable, this book that James Comey wrote. It, what's unbelievable about it is that uh, he's got some tells – like he actually says stuff in this book. He's telling on Hillary Clinton and he's telling on uh, uh, um, on Loretta Lynch. I'm t it's just really, really bad. So uh, first things first, though, James Woods, if you don't follow me, I absolutely should, at Real James Woods. Very great uh, um, patriot, if you will, with a lot of great insight. On he has a lot of... Um entertainment in his tweets oh yeah it's really good he's, he definitely thinks about it. did you know that he's an mit student uh, i don't know if he's a graduate i got i like to get it correct i don't want to call him a graduate if he just went there uh he he everybody knows him as an actor it's very possible that he went to mit and uh and and went on to acting a lot of people do that where they they'll start college and then something comes i mean look at uh mark zuckerberg was at harvard and left to pursue Facebook. So he didn't graduate from Harvard, but um, he may have an honorary degree. So, so long-winded version of, uh, of explaining uh, my reasoning for not calling him an MIT graduate. But he did go there. And the thing about MIT is to even be accepted. 1965. 1965 is when he went or right. when he – Graduated. Oh, he did graduate. 
Awesome. Well, just, According to Wikipedia, well, he, regardless, got the, he got the paperwork. Regardless, uh, science guru, extremely smart. You almost have to pretty much be a genius in science in order to go to MIT. And that's James Woods. I didn't know that. Didn't know that. So he tweeted out, if you want to understand everyone's thoughts and, more importantly, their behaviors leading up to the 2016 election, there is only one factor you need to consider. They all expected Hillary Clinton would be elected. Their every action was predicated on that one sure thing. That one thing that Hillary was guaranteed going to be elected. I'm talking about everybody. I'm talking about everybody up and down the line from Peter Strzok to Lisa Page to uh, McCabe to Horowitz to Comey to... Mueller, everybody involved, all of them. I laughed the whole time because I I know that that it was going to be close. It was going to be, you know, but it just so many different things were pointing to Hillary actually, uh, I should say Trump actually winning. And um, when he didn't, I just really felt like I knew it. But these people that believed it, and they all did. They really, truly did. I just had to laugh at them. And so now uh, Ari Fleischer also tweeted this out and re- reminded me. I forgot about this story. But this week, both the New York Times and Washington Compost, and the Washington Compost actually ran with the fake uh, uh, BuzzFeed uh, Russian dossier, Christopher Steele, BS, uh, Washington Compost ran with it. They put uh, both of them put on their front page a story about someone no one has ever heard of. Did you hear about Elliot Brody? No. Ah. Yeah. So he was on the front page of Washington Post and New York Times for paying off a mistress. Uh-oh. Both papers buried the story about someone everybody's heard of. Former FBI Deep Director McCabe. Deep Director? Uh, that's deep a, State Director? <laughs> that's a typo, Aaron. I love, I love how they, they correct me. It, deputy. Oh. D-E-P-T. Oh. I was like, <clears throat> Deep Director? Wow. Put me on a, uh, <laughs> put me on a, uh, the, uh, the thing that, um. Uh, Oh, hell, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> the seal? No, 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 no. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. So uh, Deputy somebody, Director McCabe, Somebody comment what Brian's who thinking. Was, <laughs> who was found to have lied three times under oath. Now, I'm talking about the uh, the glass things with the words that come up. Teleprompter. Oh, okay. Put me on a teleprompter. Gotcha. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's oh, that. Oh, check your Skype. I know. I'm oh. going to check it now. I, I got something. We got a, got a little bit of lockup. A little lock up. Just bear with us, folks. That's not good. Bear with us. We uh, eh, it's there all we your go. Fault, Brian. It's, all it's your the fault. gremlins in there. Um, all right, we're moving. Guess we're good. guess we're changing passwords again. Uh, FBI, if you're listening, <laughs> FBI be, is always on us. I'll be changing. Or the hackers. It could be uh, Soros funded hackers who like to do that. So. Yeah, without anyway. a doubt. So, uh, as I'm saying this, uh, James Comey is going on these shows. He's been on the show. Matter of fact, he's on tonight on uh, Snuffle Up a Gus. On Snuffle Up a Gus. And they're doing an interview. And we've got a little bit of the interview to start out. And James Comey's new book, he's he's throwing everybody. Everybody under the bus. Whatever earns him money, right? Yeah, I guess Please so. Please don't buy his book. No. Please don't. Please. No, 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 no. I, I certainly wouldn't. So here's James Comey and his tell all uh, about his emotional roller coaster ride with Hillary Clinton and how he really felt about what was really going on. Hillary Clinton's convinced that that letter defeated her. What do you say to her? I hope not. I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I sure hope not. But the honest answer is it wouldn't change the way I think about it. I mean, my hope, I didn't write the book for this reason, but talking about leadership, it was important to tell the email story because it's me trying to figure out how to lead well, that people will read that story and try to put themselves in my shoes, try to realize that I'm not trying to help a candidate or hurt a candidate, I'm trying to do the right thing. And you can come up with different conclusions. Reasonable people would have chosen a different door for reasonable reasons. But it's just not fair to say we were doing it for some illegitimate reason. But, it, but at some level, wasn't the decision to reveal influenced by your assumption that Hillary Clinton was going to win and your concern that she wins? This comes out several weeks later, 
and then that's taken by her opponents to sign that she's an illegitimate president. It must have been. I don't remember consciously thinking about that, but it must have been. Because I was operating in a world where Hillary Clinton was going to beat Donald Trump. And so I'm sure that it, that it was a factor. Like I said, I don't remember spelling it out, but it had to have been. That, that she's going to be elected president, and if I hide this from the American people, she'll be illegitimate the moment she's elected, the moment this comes out. If you knew that letter would elect Donald Trump, you'd still send it? I would. I would. In fact, that was a question asked by one of my best people, uh, a Deputy General Counsel in the FBI, who was a very thoughtful and quiet person who didn't speak a lot. And that, that morning we were making that decision. She asked, should you consider that what you're about to do may help elect Donald Trump president? And I paused, and then I said, thank you for asking that question. That's a great question. <laughs> what a weirdo. <laughs> he, he gets so weird it gets goofy to the point to where um, it, it almost seems like he's going to cry. And, and it's just very strange, very, very strange. So what he's talking about, he says uh, that he released the letter saying that it was to reopen. Remember an October surprise, he reopened the investigation to her email. He did it on purpose to 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 be able to close it and say nope nope I reopened it I looked at it again folks I looked at it again now we're going to close it so now it's over he said he did that on purpose to legitimize Hillary Clinton's win he he says I knew she was going to win and I didn't want her to have an illegitimate presidency I wanted to put the stamp of approval it's done She's legit, too legit to quit, and so she quit. But he kind of made the case that she's break that she did break the law, and then said, "But you know what? I don't think she intended to." So uh, how could you prosecute somebody under those circumstances? And we were like, "What? Well, that happens all the time, you know. Not knowing the law or not intending to break the law is almost never a defense." And he just no. made that up. Yeah, no, ignorance of the law is no excuse. You'll right. still go to jail. Right. I didn't know. I thought I could get away with it. I thought that this was okay. I've seen other people do this, so <laughs> I figured I could do it. No, did, man. Or you got to do the um, Dave Chappelle uh, defense. His, <laughs> was, his was, sorry, officer, I didn't know you couldn't do that. <laughs> That was that's <laughs> right. that's a Dave Chappelle defense. So so he does. I, I'm 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 beside myself with this with this whole uh, interview with these questionings with with the way that this is going because this is in James Comey's book where he opens up and if you read it like I guess he was writing it to try and say uh, I'm sorry Hillary please don't please don't 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 suicide me because Hillary was caught on audio hot mic mm. uh, behind the scenes screaming and yelling about James Comey. Okay. And he should have known better. Why did he reopen this? He should have known. I'm telling you folks, James Comey did this on purpose. He did this 100% wholeheartedly in order to help her win. And the thing of it is, is he's an idiot. James Comey dummy. And it just, I'm just saying. All right. Anyways, what do you, what do you get? Yeah, is, oh. he, is he on? I mean, I'm waiting for you to tell me whether or not he's on. Uh, I've got, uh, yeah, I've got, are we bringing him on right now? Yeah, if you want. Okay. I mean, we said six. He's only got till 630. Okay. So we're going to give Mr. Nick, I think it's Pulse. We're going to find out for sure. Nice. nice. Love the ringtone. Is, is that the way it's supposed to go? Yeah, probably. Wow. <laughs> Hi, this is Nick. Leave me a message and oh, call you back. Come on. <laughs> Gosh. We'll get him in a second. Was he? He it's, was on. He says it's, it's, it says he's online. Oh, we'll type him a little message and say, "Hey, um, what's up?" <laughs> so we're gonna have Nick. All right. How funny. <laughs> so <laughs> he's, he's, he's going to be running against. Uh, Didn't we have? We had a show one time where um, the message actually said the number or something like that. Almost. Uh, yeah. Oh wow! Almost really? Dock somebody. Almost dock oh, somebody. Oh my goodness. No. Well, it was actually the service. It said you reached, you reached five one three two nine four. And, and, and who did control all the lead? Oh my I, goodness! I, I feel like so um, I feel like Mike Cernovich did that one time. He was doing a scope or something, but it was live, and he made a call, and the and the machine said whatever. So 
So, oh, we almost got it. I think so. Hold All on, right. Hold on. Let's I get the audio. There I you go. The uh, oh, we got you, Nick. Hey, guys. How you doing? Yeah, sorry about that. I don't know what's going on with the... Uh, I kept kicking over my phone for some reason. It's, it, down on the computer. it's Skype. It's Skype. So we're... That's the FBI, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So first and foremost, uh, is your is your last name pronounced... Is it Pulse? Pulse. Yep, you got Pulse. it. Pulse. Okay, because it... Yep. I don't know. Maybe it's like an Italian thing where I think is that Pulsi or Pulse or but yeah, no, it's all Pulse. kinds of pronunciations. Usually, what I get is police. Usually, it'll throw an I in there. Okay, they'll, they'll call me the police. So Pulse. So, yeah. Okay. Well, when I was writing your name in the uh, show notes, uh, the the uh, they corrected your name to police. Yeah. Oh, that's why that happens. <laughs> the auto correct correct gets you. So. <laughs> So you are a Wisconsin candidate for Congress, and you're also a former Green Beret, and we are so happy to have you on the show. And you know, it's funny, we we were told by one of your fans that we should have you on the show, and I said, yeah, sure, let's uh, let's connect or whatever. But that was before Paul Ryan announced his uh, resignation, and he's going to retire or whatnot. I guess it wasn't resignation, it's just an announcement that he's not going to run again. And so I was thinking, oh my gosh, we got a guy that's probably yeah. going to be his replacement. So how how was that process, and uh, and and how did you feel when you learned about that? Yeah, it's been a quite a, a wild week for sure. Because uh, you know, start off the week continuing on our our run and our mission and who we're running against, and then midweek, you know, we learned that he's retiring. So our 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 vision and what we're running on is remaining the same, right? And at this point, we're waiting for the the other candidate, whoever it is, to jump into the race. Okay. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be this week at, at some point where the the uh, establishment, the political class here, is going to put their man or woman up, uh, and 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 that's who we're going to end up running against. Now, do you know anything about? I, we were just talking. We had uh, Paul Neal in uh, uh, last year. We had him on the show. Uh, last time he ran against Paul Ryan, and subsequently he's off of Twitter now. Right, and so uh, we we haven't heard a single thing about him. And I googled him, and it the says Google he's still said running. He's, he's running. I don't know if you've heard anything about that. So is, at he, all. is he somebody that you're running against? I, I honestly don't know what he's doing. Oh know? wow! For this, okay, this, this campaign, yeah, for this campaign we kicked off in November 17, and our focus was on uh, Paul Ryan, and so that's okay. what we've been running on the whole time. Excellent. Uh, what he's doing or not doing. It hasn't even been on our radar. Good, okay. Good. Well, you got a head start on anybody who's going to jump in the race now. What date is your actual primary? Uh, it's August 14th. So we're about four, almost a little, yeah, exactly four months uh, to, to the primary uh, from yesterday. So yesterday, people yeah, so. people have criticized in the Republican Party or Trump supporters or, or you know, those kind of people. They they don't really like, most of them don't like Paul Ryan because of his rhino nature I actually – Brian and I went to one of his stump speeches when he was a VP candidate, and he you know, he was touted as the Tea Party favorite at the time. He has long since completely destroyed that image. My concern is is if Wisconsin is electing somebody like this over and over and over again, are they, are they looking for a rhino there in the Republican Party as a, as a congressional uh, a person to fill that seat, and uh, what are what is your position? Are you a MAGA candidate, or are you you know a little bit more of a moderate type? I mean, can you tell people about your candidacy? Sure. Yeah. So the the first question related to to Mr. Ryan was when we kicked off the campaign in in seventeen November seventeen. It was a, for us. It was nothing personal. I never met him. You know, I don't know. I don't know about him on a personal level. Uh, it was a conflict of vision, and and the, that simply was this: that you don't go to Washington to spend a career. You go to Washington, work for a few years, represent the people in your respective district, and then leave. And that mm-hmm. concept of the citizen statesman has been lost. And one of the reasons why we're having a lot of these challenges that continue to go unanswered is that we continue to put the same people in Washington that are looking to get reelected. So they're short-term focused. And we have structurally have long-term challenges that this country is facing, and that's what we need to address. Awesome. Well, I, I, I really – so what do you feel about Trump and his – his uh his platform, you know, you got your build the wall, border security. You actually have a northern border with a foreign country, and right. so it's kind of like, you know, how do you feel about those kinds of things and and his ideas for, uh, you know, international policy and fiscal policy? How do you feel about all this? Yeah, that, that's a we we can get into each of the details on the respective topics, but generally, I support the president as long as that stays within the constitutional bounds. Because as a as a military guy, you know this as well. Right. 
you, you took an oath to defend the Constitution against enemies foreign and domestic. And so when you're representing the people, whether it's in uniform or whether it's in an elected capacity, that is your North Star, if you will. And so his what he ran on, his vision, generally putting American people first, let's grow the economy, let's work on cutting spending, a lot of that stuff, building the wall and, and really securing the borders is stuff that I support. Uh, so as long as that continues and it continues to stay focused on the Constitution, then we'll generally support his agenda. Right. So the next time that uh, Paul Ryan says uh, you want a blank check for one point four trillion dollars, I'll give it to you. You're against stuff like that, right? I oh, mean, and that, yeah, absolutely. That's one wow. of the, the, the major, major issues that we hit over and over again on the campaign trails. That, that one, the spending, and and separate from that, the omnibus bill. Oh. The omnibus bill. And then we had the one point one trillion dollar one in 2015 under a GOP controlled Congress, and then we had a one point three trillion dollar omnibus under a GOP Congress in 2018. So what happened to the party of limited government? What happened to the party of understanding fiscal responsibility, understanding what debt does to us as a domestically and economy, and then also from a national security perspective? Is Paul Ryan going to endorse somebody, you know, or do you have, you said you haven't met him. Is there a chance that, you know, somebody, that he decides, hey, let's put up this guy and make him run, or is there a chance that you would maybe get his attention or something like that? As far as the latest I've heard with him is he's not going to endorse in the primary. Okay, yeah, that's, okay. uh, I don't know if he said that or if it came out in a statement. So I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's focused on finishing out his, his term. And whoever is ends up winning the primary, us. Right, in, yes. August. <laughs> <laughs> yes. in August, then we could look at get, talking about uh, uh, you know, endorsement and backing going into the general against whoever our Democrat primary opponent or our Democrat general opponent is going to be. Yeah, and you're you're being elected by people in Wisconsin District One. How's your name recognition there? Are you guys doing the door to door stuff and getting people to help you out? Yeah, it's grown. And that that was the biggest challenge kicking off in November is we didn't have name recognition. And, and Speaker Ryan at the time has been here 20 years, Speaker of the House, so he's constantly in the news. And so our our focus has been twofold. One has been doors, heavy doors. And then separate from that, it's been putting on weekly events in different parts of the district to put, a, put us in a place where people that they had the time would come and visit, ask questions. The second thing we've been focused on is the last social media advertising and, and working that angle to try and raise, a, raise awareness inexpensively. Yeah, that, I'll tell you what. Um, in Ohio, we have this big problem, and I really hope that you don't run into this in Wisconsin. And that is the GOP is really kind of adversarial to anybody who we consider to be like a MAGA candidate, a Make America Great Again, uh, somebody that's supporting Trump, wants Trump to support them, and also supports his agenda. Do you think that your Wisconsin state GOP is going to be on your side and help you out? Because it seems like in Ohio, we have a major problem with that. Yeah, at this point, I'm not sure. When Obviously, when Ryan was running, they, the whole party platform here was, was backing him. Now that he's retired, uh, I, I suspect and I expect that they're going to stand somebody else up, whether it's somebody who's already in political office or someone that's been in the party. I don't know that for sure, uh, but I expect that to, to happen. And then we should have an open primary at that point where you have our campaign and then you have this new individual, whoever it is that's jumping in. One on one on one, if you will, for the the last four months, going into primaries. How about the Democrat? Opposite, how about the opposition? What what does that look like out there in Wisconsin, or is it is it something small like here and where we're at? There's uh, local local co uh, co um, council members, local council. One of the guys that we met here in Green Township, he said, "I'm I'm running unopposed. There's no Democrats here, so we can we yeah, can save our money. And, <laughs> they just yeah, show just up. Show up." I'm not yeah. saying that's there in Wisconsin, yeah. but it, do you have yeah. a situation or, or are you in for a good fight? No, the Democrats have been eyeing the seat for a while, and they had a, an individual that pushed out to the front as far as you know, if he focused just on money. Uh, he was targeting Ryan from, I think, back in July. They announced their campaign. Holy so they're, they're fired okay. up when, when Ryan was in, and now that he's retired, they really think that this is their seat to lose if you will, based wow. off of what they're putting out in the press and that kind of thing. So there's two people running in the Democrat primary right now. One has been highly touted. One raised a lot of money uh, nationally. And then uh, the other lady who's running locally has more of a grassroots campaign uh, with a lot of local name recognition. You okay. don't believe in a, in a blue wave, do you? Or, or what would you say to people? Because there's I feel like there's so many people out there that went out there and voted for Trump. And then all of a sudden you see what happened in Pennsylvania and then you saw what happened in Alabama before that. And you're like, where are these people? Um, do you, what do you, what would your message be to people who they went out and voted for Trump and now it's time they're in Wisconsin, they're in your district 
and it's time to either get up off your butt and vote or not, uh, what do you say to them? So I feel their frustration because if uh, a lot of us looked at the, the going back 2010, right, the, the House was won by the Republicans. And we heard, hey, we can't get anything done unless we win the Senate. So they take the Senate in 14. I'm like, all right, we need the presidency, and then we're going to have this agenda that we're going to put together, which is what? Right. Cutting spending, cutting taxes, getting rid of Obamacare, uh, you know, cutting regulations, uh, securing the border, right? That's what we heard for year after year after year. It comes to now, 2018, I mean, they win, and what happens? We, we don't get anything to do with health care. Immigration doesn't look like anybody's serious about immigration. Not only do we not cut spending, we've increased spending. We're spending more money than the Democrats did when they were in power. And so the, the, we'll call it the conservatives, the, the Republican leaning are basically like, well, why are we going to get out and vote? I mean, this is what I'm hearing a lot talking. Right. So my, my message is, is simple is we can't keep putting the same people in office right. and right. expecting them to change. So we have to put new candidates with a bold vision, with, with fresh ideas in, in their place. And primaries matter. We've been beating that over and over and over again as we talk both here on these, on these interviews and then across, uh, across the district. Yeah, that's a good thing to say is that primaries matter because people that, – that's all they think about is that first or second week of November where they got to go either vote for the Republican or vote for the Democrat. And everybody always forgets the primary. And it's funny. We have a, a big primary in the first or second week of May in Ohio, and yours is in all, until August. So people – I guess that's the big thing. you got to – beat into their head, hey, it's August, you have to vote in August. This isn't November. we got to get out and, and win the vote in, in the primary. Well, and something I'd like to kind of add on to what you were saying there, and then that folks that are disheartened or upset, you know, that, uh, that the, the GOP, that once again, you know, just uh, pulled the football away from us once again, you know, uh, it was impossible to do anything with Obamacare. They just could not do it. The Republicans in total control, uh, 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 Donald Trump's ready to sign it, couldn't do it. And then, and then all of a sudden, DACA, like you were talking about before, nobody wants anything to do with that. Democrats run away from that. And now we get this, uh, $1.3 trillion omnibus bill that, uh, they want to hang this around Donald Trump's neck like, uh, some kind of albatross. And, and then and he in, ends up having to pass it or, you know, sign it. Right. And in the end, in reality, what you're saying is, and what we're, we're saying here as well, uh, we're still in the fight. And we're in right. the fight to get rid of the uniparty, as we call it here on Smith Radio. It's, yeah. it's the one party where, where the Democrats uh, and the Republicans, the rhino Republicans working together uh, for, for their uniparty vision. Yeah, and the right. G- Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say the GOP is so organized. I really do hope that they give you the kind of support that you should, that all candidates that are running as Republicans should get with their, their network and their infrastructure. They have apps that you can go door to door, uh, knocking that you could use. And without their help, you, you miss out on that kind of stuff. So I'm really hoping that they give that kind of support to you. Yeah. And we'll, we'll see. And I, and I expect that they will, you know, over the next couple of weeks. We'll see how it shakes out. But to your point about the Uniparty, and we, that's what I was talking about earlier when we, uh, we, have, we keep putting people in office that are not, that don't understand leadership, right? Because a leader puts the interests of his people first and he makes decisions based off of their interests. You guys know this is in military. Yes. But mm-hmm. we have, we, we don't have that in Washington, especially in Congress. We have people focused on themselves and trying to get reelected. And, and when you have that disconnect, you have this, just like you talked about, where we're, we're not getting anything done, what, what's good for the American people. Right. And that's something I've seen uh, with Trump. Uh, I've always I've said this before on the show. Leaders don't care who gets the credit for it because they know that, that as long as they get it done, make it happen, the person that, that eventually gets the credit, they'll give it to them. That's what leaders do. And, and Donald Trump will, will will compliment anybody and everybody, whoever's doing uh, their job and doing it right. And you know, being a problem solver. Yeah, he yeah. doesn't need that credit. And then you go to people like Obama who needs it, needs yeah. the love, needs the love. That's everybody. a good thing. Are you going to either the Paul Ryan? He loves the love. You know, he needs to needs to be the attention and and all this and that. And and that's where you get these politicians that when they see Trump as the leader, they they're blown away. They have no idea. They can't you can't even work with him. Well, real quick, Nick Pulse is who we're talking to. He's going to. He's been running. For Wisconsin congressional seat, uh, the same district as Paul Ryan, who has this week decided he's going to step down after his terms up, which kind of leaves this thing wide open, which is really exciting for you, Nick. Can you tell I, one thing in order to get the name recognition, people are going to have to really learn 
who Nick Pulse is. What's your political background? Like what made you decide to run? What's your business background? What's your educational background? We probably should have started with that, but I, this is very important so that people can really kind of say, hey, you know what? I really like this guy. You know. Yeah, no, that, that's a great question. So just short, short bio about me. So I was a senior in college when, uh, when 9-11 happened. And a couple months later, graduated and enlisted uh, to join the U.S. Army Special Forces, specifically to earn that Green Beret so I could take the fight to the enemy overseas. So during that time, I uh, spent 11 and a half years on active duty, multiple deployments overseas in a variety of areas that nobody goes for vacation, right? They're hot, they're dry and sandy, and people right. don't like you, right. Right? generally when you're over there, right? <laughs> so so uh, multiple trips, got to work with some of the finest men and women, both in uniform and then in the different parts of the foreign policy world. After I got out in 2014, moved into the business world. I spent four years running a small business, security consulting business. Uh, all, the life change for my wife and I came when our little man was born at the end of oh, 2016. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and that little chub ball changed our lives, right? And so we started looking at the future and what we wanted to leave behind for him and how we wanted to, 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 be, to, to set it up for him, much like our parents did for us. And so that was the spark that got us looking at politics and getting involved. And so I wanted to take that experience from the, the Army, the special operations community, the, the small business owner, and, and take that to Washington, because I realized, like we talked about earlier, one, there's no leadership. There's zero leadership in Congress right now. Zero. They don't understand it or they, they don't want to do it, right? Right. And so because of that, we are going farther and farther and farther into debt. We're going, we're having a, a healthcare cost are skyrocketing out of control. We re- absolutely refuse to do anything with our broken immigration system. And that doesn't mean just fixing the border. That means taking a look at the laws that are just totally just inaccurate. They're just, they're just bad laws because they, they create confusion. You have a lot of loopholes and it doesn't do any businesses. Well, I'm sure there are a few businesses that take advantage of it, like the ones with the H-1B visa. Oh, yeah. But for the most part, it, it's, it's, a, it's a broken system. And again, no one is taking that, taking that on. And so, like I talked about earlier, we cannot continue to put the same people in, in office. So we decided it's time to do this. It's time to make a run. We'll set our vision. We'll run on it. And if, if they like it, we'll win. If they don't, then we'll, we'll go back to our life and, and, and move on. Well, I was going to say at the very beginning of this show, we talked about uh, or I talked about how, you know, I kind of feel uncomfortable, but it happens all the time. They find out that I served and or Brian served. And it's always, you know, this overwhelming showering of, of respect and support. And and I kind of feel like, you know, oh, you don't need to do that. It was my pleasure, you know, thanking me for my service. And I'll tell you, if you if people really want to support your troops, you got one right here, a Green Beret. That was uh, fighting for the kinds of things that now he's going to have to fight for in Washington, which is making America great again, upholding the Constitution, it sounds like, which I think is great. I'm, I will be glad to support you here. And uh, is there anything that people need to know about supporting you, following you and, and that kind of thing, which I think will help grow this movement of Nick Pulse Yes. That, so we have a website at nickpulseforcongress.com. And on that site, it has a lot of our beliefs listed out, what we're running on. Um, there's a donate link in there that always helps. Every little bit helps, $1, $5, $10. On Facebook, our, our page is Nick Pulse for Congress. Please go there and like us, share your, our page and invite your friends to like and share. We post a lot of videos on there and oh, what good, they are, policy-driven videos. We'll talk about different topics in detail, stuff that you can't talk about in these you know, 15, 20, 25 minute interviews. Right. We also have a Twitter account at Nick for house. And, and that's another area that we post content and we do a lot of, uh, connecting with our, or the, with our social media supporters. Awesome. Well, I hope everybody gets out there and does that. Definitely follow him on Twitter and spread the word. I like the idea of, Hey, you know what? You, you, you're in your little district where only people there can vote for you, but this is a national com- campaign. Your election affects everybody in the entire country because you be a congressman that, you know, does policy, federal policy. And so people from all over the country can send a dollar, a couple dollars or whatever they they want to to help get you elected. So I highly recommend that for everybody out there watching. And we wish you the best of luck and we'll be following you and hopefully have you on again. I'd love to come back. Thanks for the opportunity, right. guys, to get on and uh, have a good night. <laughs> all right. You too, Take Nick. care. All right. Thank you. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Awesome. Wow, that awesome. was great. That was fantastic. I really like it. I yeah. really like Nick. Um, somebody said something's – did I, did we misspell it on the banner? I don't know. If we did, sorry about that. You can see it looks like it looks like it was spelled correctly on the uh, on the banner you put up, so I don't know. Uh, hopefully hopefully we got that right. If not, we'll definitely correct it and uh, get it out there. Nick for house, you can't misspell that, right? I mean with well, the letter for – 
yeah, on Twitter, it's Nick, the number four right. house. His website is Nick Pulse 4 F O R. Okay. So just house, make sure you yeah. get that right. And I can't wait to see it now that he's talking about videos on it. So he doesn't just type out policy, which you see all the time on people's, uh, uh, c- campaign websites. It's, he's talking about actual videos, which that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, and for the person that mentioned uh, his name, I I got that squared away, man. Did we do it wrong? No, nah, it's, it's it's right. It's, it's me. Oh, was it the banner that's on the show, or was it the banner that on the we... show? Oh, on the show, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll fix that in post show prep. What was it? What did it say? That? I don't know. I feel like calling you out now. No, it, I'm just kidding. No, it did. It auto corrects. Oh no! It auto corrects to police. Did it say police? Yeah, for a minute. But I, I cleaned. Wait, but you, you got it right. I did fix it. Okay, cool. <sighs> Sorry about that, Nick. We got it. We got it. We'll make sure. You know what? We'll never forget that again. No, it'll so, never be forgotten. No, good, good guy though. That's that's first time we got to talk to him, and first time that a lot of people have probably heard him because he's been lingering out there running and all. And here's the thing: when you're running against the Speaker of the House, we saw this with uh, Paul Nalen. When he ran uh, the last time, he uh, was it two years ago, I think. Yeah. And a lot of these other people that are running in a primary against an incumbent Republican, it's almost damn near a complete lost cause. Almost. It's right. so hard. But Paul Ryan <laughs> announced that he is not re- running for reelection, and now it's just wide open. So this primary is going to be very, very uh, serious. Anybody who's running could be the next uh, actual congressman for us out of Wisconsin. And uh, I'm excited about it now. So, yeah, awesome. I had some stats on that. Uh, if you if you catch our scopes during the week, folks, look right there at the bottom of the screen, Brian at Brian P. Smith, and then Carrie is at Smith Radio on Twitter. Right. Mm-hmm. If you get your uh, – oh. You find I, it? Oh, why did – we talked to Megan McCain. I'm seeing Megan McCain. I'm like, where's Ryan? Where's Ryan? Oh, there's it's Ryan. under there. Okay, yeah, it's right underneath it. So, uh, just a couple little, little tidbits, little things I got from um, a, a Breitbart News. Uh, Paul Ryan's announcement comes after he has raised uh, 54 million dollars from donors for 20. 20- That's got to be frustrating for the. First of all, you know what? No, hold on. We know. We know Paul Ryan. We all know what kind of person he is. I'm glad you lost your money. He's a scumbag. If you get, if you gave any part of that. Fifty-four million dollars to Paul Ryan so that he can be reelected. Good. I'm glad you lost that money. Yeah. But so they're there saying you go. House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy may be considered for the next congressman to lead Republicans or the House Majority Whip Steve Scalise, uh, both of whom enjoy <laughs> they enjoy a good relationship with Donald Trump. They had to add that in the article. So, uh, no, I, I would, I would, uh, welcome Kevin McCarthy or, St- uh, Steve Scalise. Uh, that's the, the one that was shot. At almost the, uh, died. Really yeah, almost died. Game. It was touch and go for a while. You know, it would, it would be really, really awesome to see Steve Scalise kind of step up, get up in there and really help Donald Trump make America great again. Yeah. That he's, would be great. Hits, the reason he almost died is because the shot that he got hit with went all the way through his hip. I don't know how you even survive something like that. Through the hip. Through, like, in, out, whatever, and just, I, that that would tear you up. That would be a lot of mess. That would be a just, mess. Well, I mean, if, yeah, yeah. He, he was uh, in and out, touch and go. Just trying to put that all di- back together again as a doctor, as a surgeon, I mean, you get the, the infection and just a big mess, and, and that's what was There's happening. There's all kinds of tubes and stuff in there. That's a that's a major um area of the body where just the the amount of destruction that a bullet would cause is going to be extremely life-threatening right. and it was funny not funny but uh, ironic well weird you hear that it, it didn't kill him at first right and so you're like okay well he's just got to go through a recovery process and he'd be fine no it was like he didn't die he's in surgery now he's okay and then all of a sudden a couple of days later you hear He's in hospice. He's in big trouble. He's he might hospice. not survive. I don't know if it's hospice, Holy but smoke. but they were saying that he was uh, in critical condition. It's when like, if you think about it, if I it ch- he was okay, bones that you know shattered little pieces of bone that come come apart and start yeah puncturing so, stuff. But he made it through. And yeah, and he's back so, to work. He's back to work. So uh, yeah, and I think this it was this last um, State of the Union address that Trump gave. He the standing ovation. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So uh, mm-hmm. bring Steve Scalise out. Fantastic. Ryan, who say the speaker is uh, concerned about Republicans losing the House. Oh, oh, this is uh, uh, Paul Ryan. These are a couple of reasons why Paul Ryan's leaving. People close to Paul Ryan have leaked this information uh, that Paul Ryan is concerned that the Republicans will lose the House in November midterms and does not want to serve as minority leader. Okay. Because he's majority leader. He doesn't want to serve as minority leader. He doesn't want to be demoted. No, not at all. Speak in this uh, Trump, uh, Trump Twitter. Help me out with this, folks. Yeah, Trump well, tweeted well, out. Speaker Paul Ryan is a truly good man, and while he will not be seeking re-election, he will leave a legacy of achievement that nobody can question. We are with you, Paul. I'll explain it. I'll explain it. it was- Hold on. I'll explain it. It's this simple. It's this simple. Guys, it's no more complicated than this. Let's keep it simple. When I'm done beating the ever-living crap out of you in a boxing match, a real sanctioned boxing match, okay. I'm, I am I'm punching you as hard as I can, and you're punching me back, and we're trying to kill each other. And, and at the end of the match, I am a- awarded the win, whether I knocked you out, whether the judges gave me the, the decision, whatever it might be. Whether you paid them off or not. Well, let's just say that it's a legit win. Do we not agree that Trump is the legit winner between Trump and Paul Ryan? At the end of it, you shake his hand, you give him a hug, and you say, this is a great fighter here, even though you knocked him out in the first round or whatever it might be. This is a great guy. This is a great fighter, even though you were literally trying to kill him. When when the fight is over, and it's over, let, let me tell you something. The fight between Trump and Paul Ryan is largely done. It's well, it is now. Now that he said that, well, uh, he's going to serve yeah. until until January of two thousand nineteen. That's right. when his. That's when he's done. He's out of there. Completely and gone. And somebody will replace him. But the fight is over. Trump has won. He has won. And so he's just shaking his vanquished opponent. That's all he's doing. That's, <sighs> this is what that tweet is. I, Do you disagree? I wanted it to mean more than that. I wanted it to be that Trump was. Actually, making fun so you're of you're saying after you <laughs> knock somebody out cold and they are literally laying on the canvas unconscious, you do a Muhammad Ali, you stand above him. Oh, I thought you were gonna punch him again. No, no, you know what, Muhammad? Have you seen that picture? The most one of the most famous, probably the most famous boxing photographs ever taken. It's where Muhammad Ali is standing over his opponent. You don't even see the opponent, no, I don't think. No. And he's screaming at him, and he's got his fist up. Do you know what that was? What was that? He was yelling at Sonny Liston in the first round with Sonny Liston on his back on the canvas because Muhammad Ali knew that he took a dive and he was <gasps> angry. He was so angry oh, at Sonny Liston man. that he – at that moment when you see – I'm going to hit you if you don't get up. He said, <laughs> get up. He was screaming at me, get up, because he knew – he was not a legit, and you would know yeah. if you're a professional boxer and you punch somebody with a with a shot that you know is just grazing, or, or maybe you missed him. Right? <laughs> you know, you, you swung and you missed him, and then the guy's on his back like, like he's dying. Rocky, it's like a Rocky movie. Uh, uh, you okay. know? Yeah. So that's I know what you're saying that that you want Trump to stand over him and scream at him and say you suck or whatever. I I look at it more like, hey, you knocked him out. He's unconscious. He can't even defend himself, and you kick him. Yeah. No, <laughs> don't kick him. Don't kick him. Okay, so this is uh, this is Megan McCain on the View, and this is what happened on the View this week when Paul Ryan Ryan and Ryan Rhino, Rhino, <laughs> okay, uh, it, it took a dive on Wednesday, like a weird Wednesday, Wednesday wisdom of sorts. I, okay, I don't understand all right. it. Um, I think it was wise for him to do that. So there's Wednesday your Wednesday wisdom. wisdom. All right. Uh, we got no nothing from this woman. Uh, uh, that's why today I'm announcing that this year will be my last one as a member of the House. Uh, to be clear, <laughs> I am not Wait, what? I intend to pull that's the audience. Oh. That was elected to do. Uh, but I will. That's the audience of The View. Oh, so this is a clip Sorry. from The View. You can see in the corner it said Hot Topics. That's like one of their segments that they do. Because I was like, did they? Re- did did his audience just <laughs> literally cheer? In the house. <laughs> in, the, in the house. Oh, man. Behind the podium. <laughs> 
I'm trying not to be branded as fake news, but okay. All right, all right. Because I, I, I clipped out the very beginning That's part funny. for the, those of you who are audio only. J- here it is again. The revolving door in D.C. just took another swing right before we came on air. Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, made this announcement. She Take a look. She's so excited. Whoopi Goldberg, just thrilled, tickled to death. Oh, my God. That's why today I am announcing that this year will be my last one as a member of the House. Uh, to be clear, I am not resigning. I intend to pull my served term as I was elected to do. Uh, but I will be retiring in January, leaving this majority in good hands with what I believe is a very bright future. So, yeah, this brought tears to Megan's can, eyes. Can I, can I stop you real quick? I know we're going to talk about Megan real quick here. But did you hear the words that came out? I think I I, I just read Ooh, something. Do we got to tell? We I got to tell. tell. He said this will be my last year as a member of the House. He did not say I am uh, retiring from politics. He's hmm. running for president. He's no. going to try to primary against Trump. How does that work? Oh, uh, here's how it works. He got tapped. Yep, by the GOP, by the, the RNC. Pa- the powers that be. Mm-hmm. He was George tapped. George Soros. All- <laughs> yes. He was ta- breaking, By the way, folks, breaking news right here on Smith Radio. Yeah, we're announcing it right now. Paul Ryan is, is running. running for president 2020, <laughs> and he will have to primary our current Republican. Yeah. And let me tell you something. I got bad news. The RNC, GOP, all of the above, they are all going to work with Ryan in his okay. campaign, the camp, the Ryan campaign, <laughs> which is amazing. and not Trump. They are going to throw him under the bus like they have a million times. There's nothing new. They throw him under the bus every time. Well, we saw it, saw it with the uh, the, the Republican convention. Mm-hmm. Uh, delegates were going to go cruise and jump ship. And the Ohio coup, which yes. a lot of people credited Paul Ryan, even though he's not an Ohio representative, they credited Paul Ryan with the Ohio coup. And I didn't even know about Virginia. A whole bunch of our fans that are in Virginia said there was a Virginia coup. Really? And, yeah, and they said that there was led by Paul Ryan. Oh, So apparently wow. Virginia had a coup, Ohio had a coup, and uh, so anyway. Oh, yeah. man. Well, it yeah, ain't going to go well. Donald, Remember Trump, the hashtag? Donald Trump is doing too good right now. Things not not to get too far off of the topic, but if you need to research what I just said, go to Twitter, into the search thing, and search hashtag I'm with Matt. Okay. That was the hashtag that they used for the coup. And you can go and review all of no. the tweets that came out just by simply searching on Twitter, hashtag I'm with Matt. And that refers to Matt Borges, who at the time was the GOP uh, state, Ohio State GOP chairman. So anyway. Wow. Okay. So now, uh, uh, Whoopi Goldberg and uh, the crew, they are laughing at Paul Ryan mm-hmm. uh, for announcing that he's leaving and they're clapping, applauding, go away, go away. And, um, Megan McCain. Uh, yeah, uh, Whoopi Goldberg passes it to Megan McCain and said, Megan McCain has been crying all morning. Really? Okay. Exactly. She has a poster of him. I do. Joy gave me a painting <laughs> yeah, yeah. of him. My... So apparently she's got a painting of him in, in her room. They've given him. Well, he's so cute. He's like dreamy. He's got that tall, dark, and handsome. He looks a little bit like Eddie Munster, you know. Yeah. In my, uh, green room that I'm going to have to get rid of. Uh, Okay, so cheering kind of surprises me a little bit because Paul Ryan is a politician of an era gone by. He was one of the most powerful congressmen between 2009 and 2016 Mm -hmm. before Trumpism sort of completely took over. Ah, do you think this interesting? So she's saying that he was the GOP. He he was the Republican Party. And then she's saying until Trumpism came along. Exactly. She's she's really telling an accurate story here. But Very she, accurate. But she ain't happy about it. Right. It's a conservative. Mm-hmm. And this party is the party of Trump now. And mm-hmm. people like me are sort of like old school conservatives. We're really on our way out. And wow. this reminds me of the uh, 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 um, <laughs> of the of um, the CNN host that was just angry and screaming that pretty much he was angry and was, he was just mad. Uh, the whole white lash, the white lash guy. Oh, Van Jones. Yeah, Van Jones was angry just recently at, at how that they're not, this they're losing was and they're a not, white lash. and that they're not, <laughs> they're not making the head waves that they need and whatnot, whatnot. She's doing the same thing, saying we're still winning. We are. 
Not her. It makes me really sad. And my husband, I was texting him about it, and he said he committed the worst sin. He was serious, polite, and nice. That's not what people want right now. He just gave a press conference She's saying right. he wants to spend more time with his family. Mm -hmm. I believe him to a point. I also think he doesn't want to deal with this anymore. He doesn't want to go home run to his for president in Wisconsin mm -hmm. and try and explain some of the tweeting, some of the more incendiary things that President Trump is doing right now. And he, we're having Trey Gowdy on tomorrow. This is the bloodletting of classic conservatives and the people that are cheering. Do you know what comes in its place? Trumpism. And I assume if yeah. you like Paul Ryan, you probably hate Trump more. So maybe don't cheer when people like Paul Ryan and Mitt Romney and Trey oh, Gowdy geez. and people it's like sad. Ben Sass, who are, thank God, still in office, are maybe on their way out. Because I assure you, what's in its place, you will like a lot. Isn't he afraid that he's going to lose in November? Isn't that the real bottom line? Uh Yes, if he's going to run for president, he cannot afford having a loss. Oh, if he lost his seat? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it'd be a little hard to run for president after getting your butt kicked. So here's a, here's Look at her I face. I don't think that's it, actually. Does he have to be Hold on, they're clapping, they're cheering at her anguish and the fact that Joy Bear said, well, well said, Ryan would lose. classic conservative. Let me tell you something about classic conservatism. That would be like kind of like your your Reagans and constitutionalists, a little bit more libertarian. Uh, we have a very awesome fan on Smith Radio who talks about how um, Reagan was probably a little bit more libertarian than anything else. I, I would I would agree with that. Yeah, so constitutionalists, this kind of stuff, that's conservatism. What Paul Ryan, uh, John McCain, Lindsey Graham, this is like this neo conservatism that she has called. Classic conservatism. She, she threw out. She threw out Trey Gowdy's name. Did you see that? She slipped in Trey Gowdy because uh, who who don't like uh, Trey Gowdy? Well, uh, Trey Gowdy has kind of actually uh, turned his hand over and he's walking away too. And uh, he wasn't able to get anything done. So One thing though, I will I just, tell you I, though, I'm is disappointed. That it's interesting to hear so much truth and accuracy out of her, even though there were a couple of little lines that she said that were 180 degrees from the truth. But um, but you, she's 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 admitting a lot of stuff here. So, yeah, I know he said uh, he is a family guy, so I know he, he could mean that part. But is there a strategy here, too? Because it seems so random He's on a Wednesday that you just this <laughs> pops up. In it's the about news. fundraising because people who are donating want to know who's going to be in leadership positions. And it will either be Stephen Scalise or Kevin McCarthy. And I, I think people want to know what the future holds. But I, I'm really depressed about it. But, you know, I guess a lot well, you of still have out. you still have Mitch McConnell, who doesn't look as good in a Speedo. I'll grant you that. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why? This is because the left is obsessed with sex. That's true. That's a hundred percent true. And Joy Bear, it, it, she's just, just tapping into it. She's she, uh, pandering to. And she has. There's many pictures of her. Disgusting pictures of her with. Uh, <laughs> with. Um, oh, and I see the numbers are dropping like heads. a rock now that you're talking about. <laughs> but you still have Mitch McConnell over <laughs> there. What I don't understand is okay, what? Mitch. You still have Mitch McConnell over there. You Which is another total rhino. So if you listen to the words that are coming out of their mouth. Listen, they took over the Republican Party. They're trying to call themselves. The, uh, when I say they, I mean liberals, communists. Right, right. They decided, hey, let's put some of our more moderate communists. Look, we got our hardcore communists. They're all in the Democrat Party. But in order for communism to win in America, we need to have a monopoly. We need to have a dictatorship or, or a, some sort of an oligarchy that has full 100% control. But since we have two different parties that are always wrestling for control, then let's put our hardcore communists on the Democrat side and we'll, we'll sneak in our more moderate communists into the Republican Party. We'll make sure they stay under the radar until it's time to pounce. And this is what you're seeing with your Paul Ryan, John, uh, John McCain, Lindsey Graham's, uh, McConnell, did I say McConnell already? Uh, Jeff Flake, all these people, these are Susan Collins. I mean, I can name a bunch of them. These are the communists who were, um, snuck in under the radar. They were going to masquerade as conservatives, as right. moderate conservatives. But then when it was time for actual policy, they were going to join forces with their comrades in the Democrat party and make sure that they vote along the party line, the uniparty line. And that's what they did. And this is what you're seeing with the uniparty against Trump. They know that party's over. The Communist Party totally is over. over. No more uh, Leninade for them. No 
lemonade. No more lemonade. Oh, my goodness. If Trump ends up winning, and he did win, and if he gets his way, which is where you're seeing the resistance. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. And you saw – and a lot of truth was coming out of Meghan McCain there where she's pretty much saying that Jeez. we're losing. Trumpism right. is winning, and you guys are cheering. You guys, meaning – Comrades, we're all comrades. Right. You hardcore communists that are on the Democrat Party side are cheering for the, your, the demise of your comrades on the more moderate side. Because Paul Ryan's a comrade. And he's, you he's, shouldn't he's do part that. Of the, he's part of the crew. You shouldn't do that. You should be sad that one of your comrades, your undercover comrades, if you right. will, are being uh, forced out. You know, since, since the uh... – the twists and turns of the roller coaster ride of 2016. I do not question the possibility of anything ever again. I think we were just dead on balls accurate on this segment. Yeah, I mean, and Paul Megan Ryan, helped. Paul Ryan Megan helped. Yeah, Paul Ryan 2020. Yeah, I, I think she, she helped by dropping some truth bombs in there that the MAGA people are winning. That the Republicans are against the MAGA people, the Trump people, the Trumpisms. Right. Oh, she was very accurate there. I was. I'm happy to hear it. <laughs> so there was good news coming out of that. It sounds great. Uh, so let's wrap up the uh, the Comey thing real quick, and then we'll get into some Syria and some California stuff. Uh, so I, and I've got a couple of sound bites on that. We were we were talking about Comey uh, just before we brought our special guest on. It was a great interview. If you're just joining us right now, wait till the show's over. Go back in the second hour. Kind of behind the scenes here, but I'm probably going to talk to Brian here about cutting out just the interview and having that as a special segment that we can also share around like, hey, look. So hopefully, um, yeah, that was great. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Oh, cool. Yeah, no problem. We'll do that. And uh, so with James Comey with his new book, James Comey actually spilling some stuff out. Uh, James Comey uh, telling on Hillary Clinton and telling on himself and He's such an idiot. Uh, yeah. It, it's really, really, really bad. And he might not be stupid as as far as like, hey, he took an IQ test and he scored really high. He may be very intelligent. He may be uh, able to – he may be knowledgeable or whatnot. But we know why leftist communist traitors against the, uh, you know, the Constitution, the American people look stupid because to try to push that narrative, it's like – Trying to convince people that one plus one equals three. You're going to look stupid. You could do it all day long. Yeah. But but it's not going to work out. And so uh, uh, Jesse Waters uh, had uh, uh, Jim Jordan on his show. And this is a just uh, – Our favorite congressman. Our favorite congressman. 35-second clip, and he absolutely – crisply define and expose this deep state. Cool. Yeah, yeah, there's no better definition of the swamp than this whole deal. So think about it. Rod Rosenstein writes the memo why, on why Mr. Comey should be fired. Mr. Comey's fired. He leaks the document to the New York Times to create momentum for Bob Mueller to be named the special counsel. Rod Rosenstein names Bob Mueller special counsel and is overseeing that. And guess what? One of the issues they're supposed to be looking at. Was it obstruction of justice in the firing of Comey? I mean, you you can't make this stuff up. So the American people step back and say, if that's not the swamp, right. this this roundabout thing they got going, I do not know what you is. Need so that's the big <laughs> you needed a Carl Rove whiteboard. You needed a Carl Rove whiteboard for that. And I don't worry, folks. I've got it. That was a mouthful of what did he just it's say? It's amazing that he had that and was able to deliver it so fast and and without any mistakes or anything. It's like he had it all. In his head and just spewed it out, and it was great. Right. Rod Rosenstein, whose wife is a lawyer. A lawyer. Uh, represented Barack Obama 47 times, Bill Clinton 50 times, okay. Hillary Clinton a half a dozen times, and four times represented Mueller. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it sounds like she is... Um... Rod Rose. She's like the Cohen of the deep state. That is exactly true. Yeah. And why isn't she getting her uh, client attorney privilege raided? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I so, digress. So Rod Rosenstein writes the memo, and this is what the Democrats have been telling us. Oh, they're all Republicans doing this. No, man, I'm not going to go down that road again. We've, That's just part been... of the narrative. And they knew going in that this was an important part of the narrative. Which is why – and we just told you in the Meghan McCain segment that being – having the R next to your name or saying that 
having a Wikipedia entry that says that you're a Republican, <laughs> it means pretty much nothing. And right. Sean Hannity was talking about this that this week when he was – and I think it was Tucker too. All of them, they're all saying, you know, don't throw this, but they're Republicans, but they're Republicans. Yeah, that was exactly baked into your narrative. That was all baked in. And we, we were just saying the uh, all, comrades. They're all comrades in arms. Mm-hmm. Yep. So Okay, so Rod Rosenstein writes the memo on why Comey should be fired. Okay. Then uh, Jeff Sessions and Comey is then fired. Right. He leaks the document to the New York Times to create momentum for Bob Mueller. And by the way, Comey was a ter- was a leaker. Yeah. He was leaking like a stuck <laughs> pig. <laughs> they had to oh stop. They had to God. stop him from leaking. He was gushing. Yes. that was the biggest problem. That's like one of the main reasons he was probably fired. Right. So uh, it, it caused <clears throat> created momentum for a special counsel, Bob Mueller. Rod Rosenstein then appoints Mueller to lead the special counsel. Rod Rosenstein is overseeing that special counsel, and they're bo- both supposed to look at was it obstruction of justice for Trump, not Trump, but Trump to fire Comey. Yeah, that was a big part of the that was a, that was a debate at the time. <laughs> so they fired, they got Comey fired, right? And they brought Mueller in, and then Mueller brought his crew in, all Hillary Clinton crew in. And so they're all in getting paid. And one of the things they're supposed to look at was, did did Trump firing Comey? <laughs> Let me back up uh, real quick just to refresh everybody's memory. Maybe yours too. I don't know. It's just something obscure that I will never forget. Comey was fired the day after there was this huge backlash by the Democrats because the report came out blaming Comey for Hillary losing. And the left were beside themselves. They were so angry. They were angry at Comey, and they were railing against Comey. They blamed. At that point, they said, that's it. That's the reason why Hillary lost. Hillary lost because uh, Comey Basically said all the things he said that we talked about earlier. And at that moment, Trump said, aha, I've been trying to fire this guy for the longest time. Because I, I know he's leaking. Right. But I didn't have the political ability to do so. What does that mean, political ability? That means that if I do an action and I don't have the political ability to do it, I'm going to get such um, hatred from uh, the public. Like basically. right now, it's a public like right outrage. now, if he fired Mueller or fired Rosenstein right now, that would be politically. Oh. At, it means that it means that public support is going to be um, against you yeah. and towards your opposition. Well, when the Democrats were blowing up on Comey about how horrible of a person he was because he was the reason why Hillary lost, the next day he was fired. Funny, the you, next day. Funny you mentioned that. The Republican National Committee, the RNC, mm-hmm. they put together a website called LionComey.com. Oh, that's hilarious. Well, that was the political power that Trump needed to pull off firing him because guess what happened the day after that? They couldn't say a damn word. They couldn't all of a sudden <laughs> rally around Comey. They just spent the entire previous 48 hours blaming him for us having a President Trump. All of a sudden they were like – Wait, are we supposed to cheer this? Are we supposed to, <laughs> we supposed to applaud Trump for firing the guy he that did we, what hate? we wanted? Right. So, uh, so that was very interesting. Now, here's the thing: I'm a little worried about. They haven't done this yet because I think the Democrats aren't smart enough to figure this out. But they are definitely manipulating the deep states, trying everything they can to manipulate him. For those of you that, and we're going to talk about this with the Syria debacle too. Yes. For those of you that think, well, Trump's too smart to be manipulated. The deep state is the government. It's yeah. the CIA. It's the FBI. They've dealt with people at least as complicated and at least as intelligent and at least as savvy his, as Trump. His generals? I mean – What they're doing is they are doing a profile on Trump and saying where are his weaknesses? Where where can he be manipulated? Uh, think of everything. And they, they've been working on this for years. Yeah. And uh, we'll, get about, we'll get into that with the Syria thing. But – if they were smart, they would say, hmm, 
He waited until we were blasting on Comey. And by, by I mean we, I mean the Democrats, whatever. Big time Democrats. The whole party was railing on Comey the very next I, day he was fired. Republicans as well. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, we were kind of laughing like, ha, ah, you know, whatever. But if the deep state was smart, which they are, I'm actually surprised they haven't tried this yet. All they have to do if they want Trump to fire Mueller, which we all know that the deep state and the Democrats are desperately trying to get Trump to fire Mueller. All they have to do is start hating on Mueller. <laughs> Throw him under the bus. Throw him under the bus, and the next day Trump may fire him and say, hey. That's what you wanted. What are you going to do? Uh, all of a sudden rally around Mueller? <laughs> you just That's how it happened it. with Comey. I'm telling you. So but here, anyway. Here's the montage put up by the RNC on Comey. Democrats have been very critical of James Comey, and many of us did call for his resignation. Well, I was appalled by what Director Comey did. <laughs> Comey acted in an outrageous way. <laughs> he made a mistake. Maybe he's not in the right job. <laughs> Howard Dean, former Democratic candidate for president, says, quote, he may have destroyed the credibility of the FBI forever. This was a very serious error in judgment. Yep. The president ought to fire Comey immediately and he ought to initiate an investigation. What he did was unprecedented and outrageous, damaged the institution of law enforcement in this country. <laughs> the lowest moment in the history of the FBI. I found it hard to believe that Comey, who I thought had some degree of integrity, would do this. <laughs> All I can tell you is the FBI director has no credibility. <laughs> <laughs> So this is this I literally right just there. saw this is the video that describe that basically paints the picture I just tried to paint, which was that this we is didn't, what we was didn't happening. plan that. That that really yeah. that's how we work. Yeah. That's so how it, works. it turns out Brian was thinking the same thing. So Brian had the video to show you. And and this is it. That's what happened the forty eight hours leading up to Trump or uh well, Trump firing Comey. Right. And <laughs> He needed the political backing to do it, and all of a sudden, it seemed like a bipartisan thing to want to get him fired. They just said, I think he should be fired. And so he fired him, and now all of a sudden, the Democrats want. were like, wait a minute. We were just saying he should be fired. I didn't think he was actually going to fire him. So if they really want Trump to fire Mueller, all they have to do is do what they did to Comey right there. Right, right. So, no, anyway. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so Donald Trump tweeted out over the weekend, unbelievably – James Comey states that polls where crooked Hillary was leading were a factor in the handling, stupidly, of the Clinton email probe. In other words, he was making decisions based on the fact that he thought she was going to win. Mm, yeah. And he wanted a job. Slime ball. That's a good tweet. <laughs> So, so Twitter had Twitter moment, slime ball. Slime ball was, was something, Twitter moment. And then he tweeted out again, Trump tweeting, the big questions in Comey's badly reviewed book aren't answered like, how come he gave up classified information? Mm -hmm. Jail. Why did he lie to Congress? Uh, jail. Why did the DNC refuse to give server to FBI? Why they didn't take it? Mm -hmm. you, they go. They raid <laughs> Cohen's office. They can't even take the damn server. They don't know where it's at. <laughs> Why the phony memos? McCabe's seven hundred thousand dollars and more, folks. This thing goes on and on and on. Um, James Comey was actually kind of uh, treating his job at, at one point in time as like a part time job. And McCabe was technically uh, second in command and was technically running the FBI and running it in the background yeah, for the but, Clintons. But, Brian, but, but if James you had Comey, somebody, if you had an employee of yours running everything, wouldn't you go part time? Yeah, I would. <laughs> <laughs> oh so when God. he comes back on his part time job, he's leaking like a sieve. He's lying to the FBI, he's lying to Congress. It just cover, cover, do. I, I, Clinton's, I'll, I'll do my part to cover you. Don't worry. I got McCabe on the back end. He's, he's doing the paperwork to cover you, and I, I'll be in the limelight to cover you. Because you didn't see McCabe's face everywhere. You saw Comey's face everywhere. All deep state corruption. It's so It's like this incestuous swamp. How does this – right. How do we get to this, this point that it gets this far? It's because 
the commies have been working at this for over a hundred years. Yeah, over a yeah. hundred years. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Tom Fitton for Judicial Watch, like I was telling you before, uh, retweeted right after Donald Trump tweeted that, retweeted Donald Trump and said, the Justice Department has confirmed. This, he's like tweeting Trump's tweet, retweeting it. Justice Department has confirmed that some of the memos Comey took when he was fired contained classified information. Department of Justice and the FBI also assert his leak to the New York Times with unauthorized and compares to <laughs> WikiLeaks. Oh my goodness! It, what, it, uh, Snowden isn't he on the the, the run? S- Snowden's still <laughs> on the lamb. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I mean, Comey needs to be on the lam. Comey, better better put that call in on your red phone in, in your uh, back office. Call the uh, call your buddy Putin and see if you can get a uh, one way ticket. Wasn't to, he on uh, the Russia. West Coast when he got fired too? And they had to do it like quick so they could raid his office for the most part. And, well, make make sure that <laughs> Comey yeah, stop doesn't him start doing. shred shred shred. We need to shred all these documents. Right. So instead, he was uh, fired uh, while he was in uh, California, I believe. He was definitely out of town. So So, uh, more excerpts in Comey's book, Loretta Lynch and Comey. Comey writes that he felt obligated to take more of a personal role as a public face in the investigation rather than deferring to then Attorney General Lynch. So he's like, Loretta, don't worry. I got this. We're good. Um, and, and then ABC News writes about his investigation of Hillary Clinton's uh, unauthorized private server, quote, in part because of something involving Lynch that he cryptically refers to as a development still unknown to the American people to this day. Hmm. That server gate thing. Ugh. What is, what is it? He, he, like, he said, like, and Trump <laughs> tweeted out. I, Comey throws A.G. Lynch under the bus. Why can't we all find out what happened on the tarmac in the back of the plane with Wild Bill and Lynch? Was she promised a Supreme Court seat or A.G. in order to lay off Hillary? No golf and grandkids talk. Give us a break. Yeah, I mean, I he's he's speculating, but I mean, it sounds about right based on everything we've seen. Isn't it weird though how like all this stuff with the server gate and and all this really weird activity that should be investigated? It was treated, and I'm just kind of thinking of this right now as we speak. It was treated as though, well, you know, the Justice Department can only do so much. You know, you you can't go so far as to start to violate, you know, people's rights and all that. Unless fast forward, unless a Republican. Fast forward <laughs> to the Cohen thing, and it's like, what? You mean he has information? Let's just assume that that Trump is guilty of something. We don't know what he's guilty of, and we don't have any evidence whatsoever that he is guilty of anything, and and we wouldn't know what he's guilty of anyway until we till we find the evidence that he's guilty of something, or we create it. But you know what? If he is guilty of something, theoretically, the evidence for that would be in his attorney's office. Of course, it would be. <laughs> well, we need to raid that then. The probable cause is that you know we know that the attorney would have this stuff. So I mean, who's You'd be crazy not to How does go in and raid it, right? That's literally what we're dealing with now. Yet you <sighs> rewind back to the Red L- L- Lynch, the uh, Servergate situation, uh, just all these people involved. The, the Clinton right- Foundation collecting foreign money, Haiti, the Haiti debacle, all of it. They should everything. be raiding the IRS offices to <sighs> see what happened with the, the IRS scandal, IRS gate, which was – Crushing Tea Party uh, Was members. it Rice? I think Rice was yeah. involved with that, where uh, they were Susan Rice, God bless her. Well, they were they were using a ginormous department of the government in order to for for the for the party in control to squash and gain advantage over the opposition party. Right, and unbeknownst to us, while uh, the IRS was coming down on us. They were ramping up the FBI, the CIA, the DOJ, and they're like, we're going to have a field day with this one. That's why it all needed to be shut down from get-go. Because they're like, yeah, yeah, okay, so the IRS thing got exposed. Number one, 
we're not going to get in trouble for it because nobody's going to be prosecuted. Nobody's going to be investigated for it. And number two, we got FBI coming up. And by the way, when FBI is done, then we got CIA. We got the well, you still of, uh, you still have right now. You still have EPA. The, yeah, no, 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 <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, uh, Scott Pruitt. Scott Pruitt it is absolutely destroying eight years of Obama's EPA regulations. Well, think of it this way. If we can compare the IRS to just any department, let's look at EPA. Wouldn't it make sense, based on what you've learned from the IRS scandal and the FBI gate scandal, wouldn't it make sense, FISA gate, if you will, yeah. wouldn't it make sense that the EPA would say, you know what? This large corporation is run by conservatives who, why, why who donate they? who donate to Republican. Yeah, we've got. Why, why to would they not ransack them? Find out if there's a single molecule of a banned substance going into a sewer. No, no, no. We'll it, we'll we'll find it. We'll raid it, and if we don't find anything, well, we need to investigate further. Then we will, and we'll get an illegal to get hired on there. And then we'll hand that company over to some to the Justice Department right. to hammer down on the, uh, the illegal hiring illegals, <laughs> <laughs> hiring illegals, and not uh, treat them right because they're gonna pay them less. You know, it's they probably will. already happening, and we'll find out one day. But this is, I mean, if they did it at the IRS, and they, you know, good and damn well that the Obama administration was like, we need to do this across the board. I guarantee you, if they were crazy enough to do something this scandalous. At any one department, you know they did it across the board. Without a doubt, there's a so hashtag uh, EPA gate. Uh, let's just uh, break news right now. I'm just why can't I just go ahead and accuse him of it right now without any evidence whatsoever? I'm just going to accuse you of it, and we are going to start investigating uh, starting yesterday. Okay, all right, sounds great. And we will continue this investigation and reporting on EPA gate until. Um, the election's over, I guess. We're just going to hang this cloud over the Democrats. Hey, did you hear about the, uh, uh, did you hear about Flint, Michigan? Oh, the, uh, the bad water. I heard that, that they're going to stop delivering good water. They're just going to say, you know what? It was pipes. It's bad. They allow water to cut through. It's bad pipes. Bad the, pipes. No, the pipe. Hey, are the pipes clogged? We need to find out. No, if they're not clogged, then you're good. You're getting water. <laughs> no, uh, 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 Donald Trump, Scott Pruitt. Uh, okay. well, you heard that Obama didn't fix it, right? I did hear that, but I, you're going to have to explain to us about Pruitt, though. Scott Pruitt sends $100 million to Flint, Michigan to clean it up. Yeah. I mean, I, why, why did it take Scott Pruitt to do that? Why couldn't Obama clean up Michigan? Or, uh, Flint, Michigan. I thought that they were fixing You're saying that we never fixed it. No. Oh <laughs> They've been God. fixed. Hell no. Well, I, I, I got to say I'm just not really that surprised. <laughs> I'm just not. You're not, not shocked? shocked? Well, up until Trump came along, the idea that there could be any pragmatic solutions through government has just it's just gone away completely. Like the idea that it could possibly ever happen in the most efficient – first of all, to actually solve the problem. That's number one. And number two, to do it in a way that is somewhat – efficient is just has just lost it's been it's the idea that it could happen has just been lost right you can't even think of it you can't even imagine anymore along comes trump and it's like wait a minute maybe this actually could happen where we have a a, a demonstrated successful businessman somebody who has succeeded in life through solving these kinds of real world problems we could actually have him be president of the United States, really? And I think that's the reason why he got elected. And I hope that that excitement isn't lost in 2020. Well, because it will be different. Right. There's going to be a different dynamic that's going to happen in 2020. Before it was like, oh, you mean we could actually have this? Well, once you have it, it's like that question is no longer even part of it because we have it. So now we have to show that. We could lose it, all the successes. Well, we can demonstrate four years of, hey, here's a list of, what is it, MAGAPill.com? Uh, oh, the, yeah, MAGAPill.com. So MAGAPill.com has the list, and it's a long list, a of, long list. of all the different successes that we – and it's accumulating. The list is getting longer and longer and longer. So you got this accumulating list of successes 
that you have when not just Trump himself, but when you elect a pragmatic problem solver to the presidency in general, which we've never had in our lifetime. Maybe yeah. maybe Reagan, but Reagan doesn't come from a demonstrated business success. It's just like we know that he is philosophically there. Right. Trump is like, no, I'm there in practice. And so he comes along and Magapill.com becomes this – a uh, website that has a, a list that's accumulating of all of his su su successes. So we need to tap into that and say, we can lose this. We can lose the pragmatic problem solving. We could lose the lack of complete corrupt, you know, corruption right. if we don't reelect him. And so well, that's going to be tough. And, and think about it, folks. Uh, we're talking about all these things that have been happening, been going on in the deep state. We've even got deep local, local deep state. And we talked about this earlier this week. Eric, I, I believe his name is Eric Gret Gretchens or Eric Gretchens. I apologize. Difficult last name to pronounce. He's the governor of Missouri. Okay. He's under prosecution right now from a Democrat prosecutor, liberal, psycho, crazy person. I don't know if it's a woman or not. I'm just going to leave it alone. Okay. Uh, she is uh, indicted him because a former mistress of his, that they're not together anymore and she didn't want nothing to do with this. She even told her lawyer, I'm out. I want nothing to do with this. The judge circumvented that and said, no, woman, you're in. So they put her up on the stand. They uh, deposed her and said, so we heard that uh, Eric, the governor of uh, Missouri, took a picture of you in a compromising position and uh, threatened you uh, so that oh, you wouldn't blackmail. come out. Yeah, blackmail. blackmail. She said, uh, I don't remember that. Maybe it happened in a dream. Oh, for crap's sake. Come to find out this prosecutor, this woman that's under pride, the prosecuting attorney, she's uh, being investigated for uh, uh, fraud, uh, fraud. Because and forgery. of something. So the, the and, evidence they're using to make this happen is uh, a dream. That's that's true, and the prosecutor is under FBI investigation for for fraud and abuse for uh, uh, campaign uh, violation. This is the woman that's trying to get the the Republican governor of Missouri on a possible dream. Well, maybe we can enlist the help of a tarot card reader to come in and verify whether or not this dream is accurate. Uh, or maybe a palm this reader. This is what we're up against, folks. This is what the Democrats are attempting to do to win. Cause they got nothing. Well, and the thing is, is their constituency actually believes this stuff. They're great. Like, hey, yeah. if she dreamt it, how could it possibly be false? <laughs> like, that's the kind of thing that they would probably say. Correct. So that's why the tarot card reader needs to be enlisted to um, verify whether or not that dream was accurate. Right. Or, and or is there a dream reader? I don't know. I know there's there's actually a... Oh, you can you can look up things to try and tell you what your dream Yeah, meant. but who wrote that stuff? Whoever wrote it is actually a professional dream reader. I, I would say so. Yeah. So, I would so maybe it's not so much that she dreamt... A specific event, but maybe the event that she dreamt means something. <laughs> wow. Anyway, so so th that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing wow. with the corruptness of Democrats nationwide. Oh, no. SoCal Patriot said we need the dream police. Not no, good. No, you did Not good. D dream police. <laughs> dream police. I don't even know that song. I remember this. The song or a is dream in my head. weaver. Oh, Might need a dream, weaver. dream weaver. Yes. Help me make it through the night. There you go. <laughs> um. So as we shift in gears to Syria, going to the Middle East once again, like we were there last year. Uh, this Syria thing is really weird. Okay. Really weird. Uh, folks, I did bleep the cuss words. Oh, what? what? This is, you this don't is have to tell setup. them that. Either they're bleeped or they're not. If you think you heard it, it's because it's in your mind. Well, this might be the first time a lot of people heard it. So uh, Alex Jones. So well, first As of all, we before we get to Alex Jones, what happened? What's going on with Syria? What, we, can't let's just, lead, we can't lead with him. <laughs> well, we need to explain what happened so that maybe they will be able to either empathize or reject his reaction. Okay, tr Trump launched an, uh, an attack. Well, let's back up even further. So Syria oh, Two is weeks gassing. ago, right, we talked about this on the last show. Yeah. Uh, Syria, there's gas attack, 
and white helmets. I've mentioned them before. Yeah, what's a white helmet? Because that's been reported. White helmets, this white helmet, this. What's a white helmet? Okay, white helmet is an organization that supposedly is allegedly allegedly is on the ground and paid for with mysterious money in the background. Uh, UN money, government money, Soros money, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And they go in and they sweep in and they help, they claim to help out and claim to give credible information of what's going on on the ground where there's no news, there's no news crew, it's too dangerous for news crew. Okay. Um, nothing's there and they want credible information. So they, we have to rely on their credibility, their honesty and whatnot. Problem is, is they've been caught uh, on videotape fighting for – uh, fighting with uh, ISIS sympathizers, oh. fighting with the wrong people. I've actually saw somebody tweet out, white hat equals ISIS. Yeah. Uh, Not sure if that's accurate, if somebody's just speaking out or there, whatever. There's a woman that I follow that was in uh, – um, what, what's that city that they asked uh, – They asked what? They asked him if he knew about that city that was being bombed, and he said, I don't, rem- I don't know. Oh, I can't even remember myself, but uh, it, it was it was a gotcha question. Okay, in that city that was that was being bombed, the whole place was being fired. There's a woman that that we follow that follows us as well. She actually lives near there, and she went there and said, "Nah, there ain't no white hats on the ground, not at all." And she started to expose them and and, and give us information about what really is going on there. And so these white hat do not trust. I do not trust them whatsoever. Um, they're reporting – they'll report on the ground somewhere and not even be there. That's obviously a problem. If they're caught doing something like that, yeah. they definitely don't have any credibility. So they're no. told their job is to report on what they see. They're tasked to, to uh, go investigate a certain area. And just to say that they got the job done, they just kind of make up what they said even though they didn't go there. Sure. Why not? Oh, that's not good. Because you have the news media behind you reporting on what you reported on. Okay, so what happened is is that a whole bunch of people are being reported died men, women, and children. A whole bunch of people died in an area. I took up to six, just under sixty died, a thousand infected. Okay, and the uh, the allegation of of what has happened to these people is that they've been gassed, and then we're being told that investigation happened, and what they've determined, what they've concluded from this investigation, is that. Mustard gas, sarin gas, uh, and uh, chlorine gas. Yeah, uh, these that's that chlorine's wicked. So you have to trust uh, that there were actual casualties. And and by the way, I'm not telling you what my conclusion is. I'm just saying how you have to critically think about these things. Right. You have to determine whether or not the allegations and pictures of dead bodies or videos of dead bodies. Are real, whether they're real people, real dead bodies, or or whether they're just people acting dead, or or we whatnot. Got, we got banned on uh, uh, YouTube for for claiming that the uh, beheading was fake. Yeah, there was nothing that. Let's. What we saw on that video could have been reproduced relatively easily by Hollywood. Sure, because Our amateur. There was, uh, they didn't show didn't be- a person alive. And then a knife severing their head and then no. them being decapitated. That was not shown. No. What was shown was there was a guy who you could see what his face looked like. Then they showed a guy saw, doing a sawing motion up against his neck. But, the, but there was no video evidence of the neck being be penetrated right. by the knife. And then, then there was a cut scene and it cut to a body – that, it looked like a body. It with looked clothes like a on. body with yeah. the, with the same clothes on. I think it was an orange jumpsuit. Yeah. With a head that resembled the guy they just showed in the previous scene, uh, laying on the 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 body's yeah, on his back. back. Yeah. And we're supposed to believe that what happened to that guy was a decapitation. But what they don't tell you is that the that head could be reproduced. Also, this is simple movie trick stuff here. That body could be hollow and a hole could be in the ground. The guy could actually be – that could be his real head yeah. attached to his r- real body that you don't see. Underneath the body. Yeah, right. this could be something that could easily be um, – do movie magic, if you will. 
And and yet Yahoo says. And by the way, do we ever get that body recovered? Who knows? No. I don't know. But Yahoo said, no, no, no. That's a real decapitation. That's gore, and we're not going to allow it. Actually, it didn't get shown. I don't know why they thought it was psychology. Craziness. Whatever. That being said, this gas attack could have been. It could have been. I'm telling you right now, it could have been faked. They're saying that there are medical professionals that came running out, and their testimony is what they're going on here. Their co- doctors are coming out and saying there are people that were gassed, a lot of casualties. We treated them. We tested them, and what we looked at them, and we said, this is definitely a gas attack. So that's the, the – people are saying how could, how could you s- believe that a bunch of medical professionals would come out and say this and be lying? So that that would be my first thing is as well. I mean, if they're they're people, human, they're human beings, they're professionals, they? and well, I mean, they're human beings. I mean, they could be either they could be mistaken or they could be lying. I'm they just could saying. be they could be told by knife point or gun point. Yeah. You need to go out and say that this happened, and if we find out that you fail in this mission, we're going to kill you. That absolutely could happen too. So uh, another thing, let's say gas did happen. Let's say right. that these people were actually killed by gas. Well, the next question is, is who bombed them with what? Did, was it uh, Assad and his government that, uh, that bombed with gas? Or, or did they drop bombs on a gas dump? Yeah, because the original thing was, what, were the bombs dropped by Assad or were they bombed by ISIS? Well, the argument to that was, is well, ISIS doesn't have the ability. They don't have an air force. They don't have the ability to shoot or launch gas. So then the next question becomes, well, was the facility uh, in the hands of ISIS and it was bombed with conventional bombs? And right. then so there's all these questions. And so when John McCain made his uh, mysterious appearance in 2017, right after Donald Trump was elected, a few weeks later, there was a, that was the, the gas. Remember last year when Donald mm-hmm. Trump, because of the gas attack? Well, ironically, Donald Trump did not send John McCain to, over there. He went on his own, and all of a sudden, after he leaves, and mysteriously, a gas attack happens. I, it's happened multiple times. John McCain has gone over there multiple times, and when he leaves, there's a gas attack. There's a gas attack. And true, that's that's scary. That's and damning. Now, there uh, are uh, uh, there are pictures of McCain with right uh, terrorists hanging out with them. Right. John McCain had armed. You can look those up. Yeah. You, yeah. John McCain had armed terrorists. Anyways. Digress. Uh, wherever it came from, I don't think it's definitive proof. I don't. I do not trust. Here's the big thing. Everybody's like, "Hey, I'm a trust Trump guy." Um, you know, he he's responded. He's uh, done an attack on Syria. He did it last year, and whatever he does is, as far as I'm concerned, that's all the evidence I need. If Trump responds to it, I'm going to trust that he got information that led him to believe that all this stuff is true and right. that his response is just and all this kind of stuff. And who are you to question Trump? Hey, we love Trump here and we've supported him and we do believe he's a smart person and that he can make these determinations. But we do not trust the deep state at all. No, and that's where we're getting to, folks. <sighs> yeah, that, I, that's my a personal thing. belief is that uh, they're active in the background and they're attempting to get Trump to do something at any that if they can't take him down with Stormy Daniels, they got to take him down some other way. Right. There's just too much going on here that could lead one to believe that this could be a manipulation of Trump. Now, we talked earlier in the show about the fact that the deep state's been on this for years now. Right. And they've done all these profiles on Trump behind the scenes and they've learned what motivates him and what doesn't motivate him. Don't they know that he has a heart? That That's actually a, a, a big thing with him. He's right. got a massive heart. This is a guy who, when he found out um, uh, Brunel was down in the dumps, gave her job, all the, whatever it is, if somebody's down in the dumps and they have heart and somebody that's worth helping – he really think, helps. The out. army guy got caught in Tijuana in Mexico. Oh, yeah, he really reached Trump out. Trump helped him out. Right. There was big help there. Uh, there was a guy. I, this guy didn't necessarily need help, but it shows Trump's heart. And that was the mechanic that pulled over to assist 
Trump's uh, limo driver, I guess it was driving a limo, broke down. Right. Some handyman pulled over and was able to fix it on the spot and get them back on the road. Trump, very quietly, without saying anything to anybody, didn't want to take any credit for doing this, didn't even tell the guy he was going to do it. No. Paid off his mortgage, and the guy was like, wow, how, how the heck do I not have a mortgage payment anymore? Oh, that's and that's when he found out that uh, Trump did it, but Trump didn't take any credit for it. So the point is, is that he's got this giant heart. He, uh, the deep state found out last year that it really affected Trump to see the video images of children appearing to be dying of right. a, a gas attack. He was also um, uh, moved. He's always moved when um, oh, what, children are being attacked but, and uh, women, children, whatever. North Innocent Korea. people. North oh, uh, Otto Warmbier. Otto yeah. When Otto Warmbier was killed in um, what he thought was an unjust treatment of somebody who tried to take a poster off a wall in North Korea, ended up being uh beaten to the point of having brain damage, apparently. I mean, how else does he end up getting that kind of brain damage? Right. And it ends up causing his death. That deeply affected Trump, and the deep state saw that and said, hmm, we can, we can, maybe we can maybe we can play we can on this. this. Yeah. We can do something with this. When they, they so, saw how Trump, during his uh, State of the Union address, this, just this most recent one, had Otto Warmbier's uh, mother and father there. Yeah. So he has a heart. And it definitely affects him. And so the deep state could definitely, yes or no, answer this question. Would the deep state know about this, understand it, have used it on other people in the past, and you def- decide to use it on Trump? Uh, yeah. Right. So this is where I'm at. My whole thing is, is I don't trust the deep state. Uh, based on everything I've seen since 2015 out of the media, out of experts, right. out of the DNC, out of the GOP, out of everybody that works in government, all the crazy stuff that I've seen. And I'm just like, wow, really? I guess there's nothing I can't believe. At the end of the day, I got to say, um, I, I don't know. So the, the question now becomes, do we trust that Trump would make a bad decision based on being manipulated? I guess it depends on at what extent and who's involved. If the, if the deep state is playing on his heartstrings right. in the best way that they know how. We're talking CIA. Children. children. What about the children? So my whole thing is, is I'm not throwing Trump under the bus. I am not going to uh, abandon him. No. And I'm not going to freak out, but some people do. Some people did do a little freak. Some people lose their SHI. We had – now, what we just gave you was an entire background on what led up to Alex Jones reacting to Trump deciding we need to have a military uh, response. By the way, the military response to the gas attack was not done before France and, and England. Yeah. Jumped in and said, you know what? We'll help you on this because we believe what the deep state's telling you. Also, our deep state is telling us this. Your deep state is telling you this. We're going to put our money where our mouth is oh, and yeah. we're going to join you in a coalition to attack Syria. And Alex Jones responded. We have volume. No, I actually had to del- I, no, hold on. I had to cut the volume out of the first five seconds. So that so I we'll could resume. not. I could not subject us. I, yeah, the, subject the audience of Smith Radio to the kind of uh, profanity. That, I couldn't delete it. It was. It, <laughs> you could have put a couple beeps in there, right? No. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you on video who are watching, you could see his visual cues. Here we go. We'll did go you, for- did, wait, did you pixelate his mouth like they do on mainstream? <laughs> they did. They pixelate. <laughs> if you say. Whatever. They pixelate the mouth because of lip readers. Well, uh, iMovie did just go through a new update. If anybody has any information that hooked me up on that, I would there you love go. to do All it. All right. We'll go full screen with uh, Alex, <laughs> I've lost my ever-loving mind, Jones. Here we go. He's screaming, yelling, slamming, slamming, screaming, screaming. Now Answer, it- nobody f***ing pure in this goddamn f***ing world. Wow. <laughs> See, not I'm f***ing pissed right now. Syria fought Al-Qaeda. They fought ISIS. They fought it all. And now you got Mattis and f***ing all these people shitting all over us. <laughs> you forgot that one. Sorry for Damn that. 
liberal fascists censoring us everywhere the last two I'm days. censoring you, sorry. an emergency fucking 36-hour broadcast trying to stop this shit that can lead to World War Three. Is that and not you a cuss word? <laughs> liberal pieces of <laughs> You fools and support this you degenerate <laughs> and fucking Mueller and fucking Comey and you. Every major analyst <laughs> on right now. Every analyst agrees that this could trigger World War Three, unlike anything on our history. It could. And it the could. Russians were the good guys battling ISIS and Al Qaeda. I am not a Russophile. I've never been to Russia, but I've studied the geopolitics. They are the white knights. I don't disagree with that. Okay. And our military five years ago joining the Russians to block Obama and the Arab Spring and do the right thing, did the right thing, and now Mattis, and Mattis looks like a fucking Emperor Palpatine. When that sucker wow. knows full and well that Al Qaeda and ISIS staged all those fucking chemical attacks. Could be. Now they're blaming it on the. <laughs> There's a lot of bad words there. When the are we going live? I can't do this shit anymore. Ready to go live. Fuck Trump and fuck these people. Oh, so he, this is yeah. this wasn't broadcast. At a certain point, man, I'm sick of all you liberals and man like you're a bunch of cowardly fucks. You're not Americans. What's going on? Hey, we're ready to go live. So they okay. aren't live yet. Should we shut these feeds down and delete those? And I'm gonna <laughs> try to control myself. Dude, just shut those feeds down and restart them, okay? Okay. Well, if he didn't want us to play that, sorry about that, Alex. But hold uh, on, it, ho whoa, ho, ho, hold on. Uh, I got a theory on that right there. What he's venting and what? I think he did that on purpose. Oh, I think he did it on purpose, and it was leaked. By the way, it was leaked out by WikiLeaks. Well, I mean they. So he had a feed I, going, and this was being broadcast, but it wasn't his show. That explains why the audio sucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here echoes, and it was like he the the microphone that was in front of his face was not what we were hearing. We were hearing some other microphone because that's why you heard echoing, and it was it was a little bit on the quiet side. It wasn't like real clear, like what you're hearing me speak into this microphone. It's it was more like you gotta be kidding me. You know, it was like you could hear. It was further what are you away. Talking about? Yeah, a lot of echoey stuff and and all that. Well, it would be like, it would be like if I'm talking right now. Like I just turned my mic off, but but I but you can hear me through, uh, through my mic. Yeah, through through Brian's mic. So well, here's my theory. Alex Jones is real. He really is hopping mad about this. I, this I I believe that he's really mad. He's not making that up. He's not acting mad. He's actually mad. He's dropping the GD, the MOPs, the, the LMPs, the CSs, the, C the all all uh, day blank long. Suckers, yeah, yeah, all day long. And so I, which he's allowed to do. We only censor it here because we don't. We prefer not to have that kind of language, except for the S word. Apparently, yeah, I don't know why that got <laughs> slipped out. Anyway, wow. so uh, well, no, um, I, I, I think that what he did, I think he had somebody record that mm -hmm. on purpose. Because he looked to, like he was to, doing a show. To leak it out. Okay. So, but, but at the end of it, he says, okay, okay, delete that. I'm going to compose myself. Let me get it together. Okay. We'll show prep, show breath. prep, deep yeah. breath. Okay, we're going to go live. All right, cool. All of that, yeah, delete it. Now, now, if he said delete it and you leak it out and you work for him, you're fired. It wouldn't leak out. It, I was telling... Well, I was telling my be. wife about my it. My question was, was that a live cast? Was somebody live casting that? And he was okay with it at first, but then he lost his self, and then at the very end of it said, well, let's just delete it. When he said, let's delete it, he didn't well, say – Apparently it wasn't a live cast that. Well, no, no, what I'm saying is, is he didn't say, let's not broadcast that. He said, let's just delete it, which is what you would say if you did a Periscope and you didn't like it and you want to delete it. So you delete it. Sure, but anybody that saw it up to that point would have saw it. Yeah, but you can't uh, – I've, I've looked for software before to download other people's periscopes, and mm -hmm. it's very difficult. But somebody's doing it. Apparently, WikiLeaks got I'm not going to name this. any names, but uh, there's, there's uh, friends of ours who um, – actually a couple. I know two different people who have a perfect crystal clear broadcast 
of somebody else's periscope that is no longer available, and they use it to call out that oh, broadcaster. Okay. So, so it's it's, so it's it's possible. Well, if you I, really I could, want it, I'll call them up and say, "Hey, what are you using, dude?" <laughs> well, now that I think about it, I can the the new iPhone updates, folks. I don't know if you know this or not, but there's a a, a drop down screen, and you can actually record your phone's screen and internal audio. Right, that's yours, but what if you wanted somebody else's? That brought that No, put I go out to their a, Okay. If I go to their periscope and watch it, I can record it. Okay. All right. Anyway, so that's Alex Jones losing it big league, big league losing it. And uh I'm glad you used the proper vernacular. Somebody said that on my scope the other day. Big league. Big Lee. Oh. And I told him, I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. We have fans that said, use it you... in the text group, which, by the way, if you want to be a part of, is patreon.com slash smithradio. But I digress. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah so, anyway, so uh, apparently this is such a hot button for Alex Jones. He's absolutely just obsessed with – he's insane. With, and I understand. I understand why he's he's upset and he's, he's kind of frustrated and flustered. And – uh, you gotta, you gotta give yourself a heart attack, man. <laughs> you, you gotta gain some kind of composure. Would, would you? Are you giving a lecture to Alex Jones, <laughs> bro? This is why people make fun of you, dog. No, but he he's actually admitted that um, he's got anger management. No, problems. not the anger management. He said he's playing a character. You ever heard him? Heard that? What? He's openly admitted. That the craziness that you see sometimes is just him playing a character. What's the character's name? Well, it also is called Alex Jones, but <laughs> but he's pretty much admit that he. So is he, I don't know. It's like split personalities. He's got different. Per, he's got different. Well, no, he's 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 doing his show personality and then his regular personality might be a little different. Not much. I could totally see. Being out in public at a bar with him drinking a beer or whatever, him talking like this in a normal conversation with Three, me. Three, so. two, one. <laughs> it's oh. It's such. <laughs> oh, yeah. We do so many did that at the bars. Just nice and calm. No big deal. So her personality is definitely different, <laughs> too. Yeah. So, yeah. We, had a, we have a friend, uh, actually relative, who likes to sucker bunch people when uh, drama and alcohol get intertwined uh, the blue, so Alex Jones nice sucker and calm. punch a stranger by the stranger. way total stranger St- please stranger yeah so I want to steer clear <laughs> so Alex Jones uh, nice and calm out of the blue roo, 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 roo. Uh, okay I'm sorry guys I'm just playing a character let's go on uh, what we were talking about yeah he's at, you, you could look that up I, I don't know I there's good and bad to that I mean you want to bring a performance when you're well, this is totally inside baseball to some people like I we this is how we talk normally, but there's definitely people that that bring a certain persona. And I'll give you a perfect example. If you guys ever listen to Philip DeFranco on YouTube, very 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 popular YouTuber, uh, he does these ten minute, twelve minute shows where he talks about pop culture for the most part, and sometimes politics gets involved because sometimes politics and pop culture intertwine. So he talks about politics sometimes too. But he does these 10, 12-minute shows, and they come out several times a week. But he also started doing these sit down, put a mic right in front of you, have a guest, okay. and we'll just hit record and talk for an hour. And it's way slower pace. There's no jump cuts or anything like that. It's like literally here's an hour with Philip DeFranco and and his friend or whatever. And he, So it will be him and maybe one or two other people, and they're just discussing. It's a lot different. Because he wants to – he gets into his role. He st- says his lines or he says what he wants to say, cuts, does these jump cuts, and it ends up being this 10-minute thing. But if I were to sit down and have a a, a beer with him, it's going to be totally different. So there's there's a little bit of that. I mean Paul Joseph Watson, same way. If you sit and watch a seven-minute clip – That's right. Uh, they're all jump cuts and there's no spaces, no breathing, <laughs> no breath. Yeah, it's just like boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. But when well, he was hosting, yeah. well, he was actually hosting um, uh, Alex Jones' show, or even when he's a guest, and it was uh, a lot slower pace, a lot, lot slower. Right? There's no even slower than Smith Radio. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. 
we like to uh, Keep belabor the point. <laughs> Beat it. We belabor the point. So anyway. So Donald Trump tweeted out, the Syrian raid was so perfectly carried out with such precision that the only way the fake news media could demean was by using the term, uh, misusing the term, by... By my use of the term. Mission accomplished, which is a reference to the meme that was created by George Bush. W. Bush after raiding uh, or you know doing the military I, operations in Afghanistan. He was uh, famously on an aircraft carrier with his jumpsuit and whatnot, uh, the actual flight suit. You can see he was a pilot. Yeah, so he, he, he had his flight suit on and he announced – to the world on the aircraft carrier with all the men assembled in uh, in the little thing, mission accomplished. And and actually there was a real. This was not photoshopped on there. There was a real giant banner that was hanging from the tower on the aircraft carrier that said mission accomplished. Right. So, so it, 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 so Donald Trump said uh, was by my use of the term mission accomplished. I knew they would seize on this, but felt it was such a great military term. I should bring, I should be brought, it, it should, should be, be brought, brought back, back and used often. Interesting. Um, I actually don't think Trump is making this up after the fact, and I'll tell you why. He is the master. It's trollicious. Of, he is the master <laughs> troll. When he does tweets or when he does um, public speaking, he makes sure that certain language is used that's going to end up being the headline of the day. Yes. He's done this so many times. He almost does it every time. He is the master of driving the news cycle. Right. And it, it's it's like a, a movie with, with the, that has the uh, the one line that you – I'll be your huckleberry. You know? Yeah. <laughs> law don't go around here, law dog. Kansas City law dog. Okay. I'm just saying that the one-liners, they write them into movies all the time. Or just any kind of thing that you know that when you say is going to be like, oh, did he say that? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> what does this mean? And, and, and they bring in the, the CNN brings in the 18, 25 person panel. Like you can't even, you have to pan across <laughs> right. to get everybody in. I thought that was a joke. Somebody made fun of it. I think it was Mark Dice. <laughs> Or something. They made fun of how big this panel was. Or maybe it was uh, the, the guy that does the Songify. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they they photoshopped themselves into the panel <laughs> so that they can <laughs> sing and l make it look like they're part of the panel. Right. And they jammed themselves in one of them CNN panels, and it looked like a football team. Like a, <laughs> It that's, looked like the sideline of a football game. That's how big the panel was. That's so. hysterical. But Donald Trump will make sure that he creates the news cycle by including very specific and – he, and he hides it. It makes it look like it's a faux pas. He – even the Kafefe thing may have actually been an accident, but the fact that – he, it it turned into the driving narrative for the next month or something like that. Oh, it was it was on. Yeah, because it was he, definitely yeah. On. So even the Kafefe thing is a per, is a, an, a one of many many examples of where he does this. So the fact that he would have known prior to saying mission accomplished that it would become a possible meme used against him, he may have actually known that prior to and said, you know what, good. I want them to talk about this. <laughs> so, but he's right too in saying that it's a great military term and it should be brought back and used often. Yeah. I mean, it's don't let what does Brian always say? Brian says, do not let the left steal our language. Don't let them no. steal. Don't let them steal the rainbow. The rainbow is a biblical thing, it's ours. And, Man. It, and instead, it's become the flag of homosexuality. Which is absolute insanity. Like, I can't believe that that would rep. It's supposed to rainbow is the, 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 the never going to flood the earth again, man. Come right. On. It was God's message to the world that he's not going to flood the earth again. No. So. Anywho. So uh, I, taught, I teased earlier about John McCain coming out and tweeting, and he did. John McCain came out. And I'm telling you, when John McCain goes to the Middle East and leaves, things happen. And they're not good. So he tweeted out. Airstrike alone won't achieve objectives in Syria. Give them hell. 
No, he didn't say give them hell. But he did say airstrikes alone won't achieve objectives in Syria. That reported by The Hill. Well, airstrikes happened last year, and what was the objective? I guess if you made it depends it, on what the objective is. If the objective was to punish them for using weapons of mass destruction, I mean, I guess wouldn't that be considered punishment? But if the objective was to get them to stop using chemical weapons, then he's right. Okay. Because it didn't happen it didn't work last year because they did it this year and doing it again isn't going to get them to stop doing it again. I I I at this point I anticipate at some point in the next 5 years Syria gassing somebody. And most likely themselves. Yeah. So okay. And whether and it, I'm not saying whether it was ISIS or Assad uh, Something happens with gas. Over there. I, I kind of believe that gas was probably actually used. I, there's a lot of conspiracy theorists out there that say it's just they're all crisis actors and all that. <laughs> I, I mean, there's some, just because some things are false doesn't mean everything. Yeah. It's all false. I, I'll give them that. I'll say, okay, maybe some people did die of sarin gas attack. What? How that happened? I don't know. So, right. So uh, McCain also tweeted out again said. I applaud the president for taking military action against the Assad regime, and I am grateful to our British and French allies for joining us in this action. To succeed in the long run, we need a comprehensive strategy for Syria and the entire region. I honestly think that... that's uh, John McCain, that's why they call him a war hawk. Yeah, he's definitely been properly labeled war hawk. Here's the thing, too... Um, I, I kind of feel like the this constant drumbeat for conflict and war and and hatred and animosity towards Russia helps me to believe that Syria is just their attempt to create a proxy war with Russia. Uh, and so, yeah, I well, think that. about it. If I the see that. if the gas attacks were a false flag, then it makes sense. They they let's do these false flags and we're going to attack Syria. Russia's going to oppose it. They're going to hate on it. They're going to maybe even respond to it. And this is how we create our proxy war with Russia again. So I, th I think that that's that's a, a possibility that people need to think about. Did you hear PJW's take on this? Uh, based on what I remember, remember last year <laughs> when this happened last oh, year, he was he was flaming last year. I mean, uh, upset. Upset. He I'm was sorry, upset. I didn't, I didn't mean to say. And that. there was a debate between him and Bill Mitchell, and I believe that Bill Mitchell walked all over him. But then subsequently, there was a debate, like within the next day or two later, between Bill Mitchell and Stephen Molyneux, who I think Stephen Molyneux got the better of. And the reason I'm saying that, I'm not just trying to hate on Bill Mitchell. It was a critical thing that happened because what ended up it ended up causing this big fracture. Like Bill Mitchell did not take it, take. His performance against Stefan Molyneux very well in that debate. And it all of a sudden started this huge fracture between the trust Trump and the Trump skeptics. And right. you had this huge giant falling out between Bill Mitchell and, and uh, Mike Cernovich. And I think that the left took notice of that. And they were uh, like, PJW hmm. has taken notice of that. Okay, so so you had your PJW, Stefan Molyneux. Um, um, not necessarily uh, not trusting Trump. But but looking at everything Trump does as an individual, okay, let me look at this. Let me analyze this without emotions involved. Uh, Bill Mitchell uh, says fl flatly, I will defend Trump till the end of time. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, and people say, actually, I heard this from Mike Cernovich. People need to stay in their lane. Everybody has, has their niche and all that. Bill Mitchell's niche is... Whenever there's bad news and you're a Trump supporter and there's things in the news and things are happening that's making Trump look bad or or Trump may do something and people are like, why is Trump doing this? Bill Mitchell is the go to guy that will explain it away and make you feel better. He's the battered wife. <laughs> the battered wife syndrome. You always make everything. You know, when you got the husband that comes home. I wasn't like, going. I didn't even <laughs> think of that. I'm just saying. He gets a little crazy. He kind of. It's all right, children. Don't worry. Oh, so the – no, I'm not going down that road. I'm just saying that if you need – if you're a Trump supporter 
and you need positive news no matter what. what. Right. Your Voice America is actually the, the only outlet that I know of where you're guaranteed to get a positive spin on it no matter what happens. And we'll, so, sec- we'll second guess it. I promise you that. We'll, we'll, we'll look at all different possibilities, which is why I think Smith Radio brings a unique perspective in that regard. That we're going to say, well, this side's saying this. Some of that I think is true. Some of that I'm not, I don't really buy. Right. And then Bill Mitchell's side is saying this. And I think that this, that's a very good point, you know, or, uh, I think it's a little bit much. So, um, but, but it just so happens that Paul Joseph Watson is kind of more of on the Alex Jones side, which is we need to be more isolationist. And by the way, I actually, I'm more of an isolationist than anything. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I pretty much am. I think we can support Trump and make America great again and still uh, support that America first, isolationism to a certain dis- extent and whatever. So so what did uh, Paul Trissa Watson say about it? Pit King War in the Middle East based on dubious claims about weapons of mass destruction. Because that's worked so well before, hasn't it? I don't know which benefit I like the most. Hundreds of thousands of dead Iraqis, thousands of dead and maimed US troops, the emergence of ISIS, an international migrant crisis, or the literal reintroduction of slavery. Take your pick. And based on what? A chemical weapons attack that Assad had no motivation whatsoever for carrying out. An incident which hasn't even been properly investigated by anyone. We're going to start World War III over that. So Assad was on the verge of victory. And he just decided to bring on global condemnation and coalition airstrikes for the hell of it. For shits and giggles. Do you think we were born yesterday? Well, you see, I was winning the war against ISIS and al Nusra, But then I decided to order an illogical chemical attack to turn the whole world against me. Because everything was just going too well for me. I mean, at least last year's airstrike was based on solid evidence that Assad carried out a chemical weapons attack, so why not now? Oh no, that's right, Mattis had to admit nearly a year later there was no evidence he did. Oh, Virtually oops. every major war in living memory has been started on false pretenses. But f*** it, let's just bomb Syria anyway, right? I mean, we're always so consistent in intervening when Middle Eastern dictatorships kill children, aren't we? Apart from when Saudi Arabia does it on a regular basis and no one gives a shit. Oh, my mistake, we did give a shit because all those cluster bombs they're dropping on Yemeni kids they came from us because we really care about the children. Theresa May cares about the children. I mean she admits she doesn't know who carried out the chemical weapons attack but she's just gonna bomb Syria anyway. So Parliament's going to get a vote on Brexit which the British people already voted for but attacking another country which is opposed by the clear majority of Brits no parliamentary vote for that. Fuck democracy. Fuck parliament. Fuck congressional approval. Let's just Good declare job, war man. by tweet. No, but man. Tony Blair says it's a great idea. And we all know his track record on Middle Eastern intervention is exemplary. It concludes that Iraq has chemical and biological weapons, which could be activated within 45 minutes. Yeah, let's listen to that guy. I'm just glad that we still have a strong, righteous, left-wing, anti-war movement to speak out against all this. Oh no, that's right, they ditched all that for the far more pressing issues of gender pronouns, shutting down free speech and hating white people. But at least prominent left-wing celebrities are speaking out, right? We cannot afford to lose more Americans in someone else's unwinnable conflict. She's all right. But at least liberal yeah. comedians like Stephen Colbert, who used their talents to mock the disastrous occupation of Iraq, are being vocal, right? Oh no, he's too busy making fun of Tucker Carlson for stealing his bit about pandas. And yet, of course, Trump's doing this to distract from the Mueller investigation, to posture as being tough with Putin. Just like Bill Clinton bombed Serbia to distract from Monica's BJ in the Oval Office. Trump is going to war with Russia to prove he's not a Russian agent for D chess. So I hope all you clowns are happy that your fevered hysteria about Russian collusion has brought us to the brink of war. Well done, idiots. Oh, and all this just happened to unfold in the same week that Mr. Regime Change John Bolton became Trump's national security advisor. Just a coincidence. Also, just a coincidence that China recently issued the gold-backed yuan to compete against the petrodollar. Russia and China are currently enjoying the best relations ever. Meaning the US deep state now needs a pipeline through Syria to compete with Russia for European gas and oil. The last two countries to introduce a currency to compete with the petrodollar Iraq and Libya. And we all know what happened to them. Again, just a coincidence. It's time to assassinate Assad. Assassinating Middle Eastern dictators. What could possibly go wrong? We came, we saw, (laughs) he died. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh yeah, literally everything Russian generals are saying we're closer to nuclear war than during the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis. Russian state TV is telling its citizens what to take to the bomb shelter. American state TV is telling its citizens about Stormy King Daniels. Stormy Daniels, Stormy Daniels, Stormy Daniels. Oh yeah, and how are millennials who get PTSD from mean comments on the internet, snowflakes who need puppy cuddle safe spaces when they encounter ideas they don't like, how are they going to cope with a world war? How's that going to work out? Oh, but it's just going to be a little symbolic airstrike like last year, just a, just a little tiny one. No, from everything they're saying, it's not going to be a single target airstrike. It's going to be a massive bombardment. So we're literally acting as ISIS's air force in decimating the armed forces of a secular government that is fighting Islamic jihadists in support of jihadist rebels who literally round up child hostages and parade them around in cages in support of the very rebels who themselves used chlorine gas against the Kurds and we're told we have to do it because it's the moral thing to do Give me a fucking break. Look at these Syrians in Douma, where the alleged chemical weapons attack took place, after they were liberated from Islamic jihadists by the Syrian army. I mean, they look incredibly unhappy. We better bomb them to make them feel better. I'm just thankful that the integration of Muslim migrants is going really well in Europe, because there'll be millions more on the way after this. And what's the plan for Syria when the regime collapses? Who's going to fill the vacuum? Is anyone asking these questions? And why would Assad do that, given the certainty it would hurt his own interests? And while we're on the subject, by the way, why is a war in Syria a good idea for the United States in the first place? How would it make us safer, happier, more prosperous? Those seem like reasonable questions to us, in fact, the exact questions you'd want your policymakers to ask. But no, they're not asking them, and they're offended to hear them. Here's a question for Trump supporters who also support this attack. Does it concern you that you're on the same side as Democrats, the establishment left, the legacy media, the deep state, the military-industrial complex, and the neocons? Because if it doesn't, you've lost your frigging minds. Be prepared. There is a small chance that our horrendous leadership could unknowingly lead us into World War Three. Who said that? Mm, Donald Trump. Do I think this will actually lead to World War Three? Probably not. But world wars have been started because of less. We can only pray that there's a slither of hope that Trump remembers his own warning and walks us back from this awful precipice. That he doesn't let the deep state blackmail him, trick him, manipulate him into starting Yet another stupid war. So, here, first of all, it sounds like that was a little tiny bit older of a video because we've already had the attacks. It sounded like he was referring to like – he was putting out his opinion from before we responded and we did uh, attack. And he pointed out um, that – it was going to be a massive bombardment, not just a single attack on a single target. It turns out it was a very limited, small little attack. They're not going to have sub subsequent attacks. That's been announced already. So that part of it was wrong. But almost every single little detail besides that prediction uh, was pretty accurate. Yeah. That's why it's kind of scary. That's why That's why I can't just be 100% on this Trump trust Trump um, side of it, even though I, I trust Trump. It's the deep state. I don't. However, here's a couple of interesting facts, and uh, which is why I don't think this is going to start World War III. It was a limited attack. Russia started pulling out prior to the attack. And I almost feel like this is Trump throwing the deep state a bone just to get them off his back and that he may have even talked with Russia behind the deep state's back prior to doing what he decided to do, which was, hey, guys, just stay out of the way. I'm going to bomb a bunch of nothing targets. Nothing's really going to be destroyed um, for the most part. Is that part. what they're reporting? The, not no, no. Of... I'm just giving you oh. my take. This is literally my take. <clears throat> and that um, uh, I'm with you guys. I got to I got to. I got to appease the deep state here real quick that's uh, got more power than me, apparently. Deep state has way more power than me, but I'm trying to wrestle but, this thing back. I'm trying to gain control. But could you imagine having this conversation with Putin? 
listen, Putin, I'm with you. I'm trying to do as much as I can to make the world a better place. But if I don't deal with this deep state, you've got to. Right. That's really what it boils down to, right. right? If I'm not dealing with the deep state, then you're dealing with the deep state. Yeah. And so Trump may actually have acted in a way that was going to prevent World War III by doing what he did behind closed, se- but behind closed doors, behind the scenes, behind the deep state's back. Am I speculating? Am I telling you any facts? No, I'm just totally speculating right here. But I'm basing it on what I'm seeing. Limited strikes. Russia gets out of the way, and then as soon as kind of weird, right? As soon as they get out of the way, they talk tough. And they're like, "Big consequences are coming." In a way, I bet you Trump suggested to Putin hey, that he responds that way. Why don't you do that? <laughs> yeah, tell them that that consequences are coming, so that way maybe the deep state won't act so, like a bunch of morons. So anyway, wow. What my, do you think? You think my take right? is no. I I I like what you said. I agree with with what you said, but I agree with Paul Justin Watson at the end of that clip saying, "Hey, Trump." Don't let him manipulate you. Right. I think he's. I think he may be playing him like a fiddle. I would not be surprised. <laughs> Folks, share this with your friends and family all around the horn, Definitely. everywhere you are. YouTube, Facebook, Twitters, and Vimeo. V-I-M-E-O dot com. Vimeo dot com slash Smith Radio. With unfathomable power. What kind of power? Unfathomable. It's unfathomable. Without fathom. Without fathom. <laughs> <laughs>